Are you looking for a way to feel more in charge of your life? Sometimes, life can feel like it's pulling us in all directions, making us feel lost or out of control. But what if I told you there's an ancient way of thinking that could help you take back control and find peace in the chaos? Welcome to Stoicism, a way of looking at life that's all about being wise, brave and disciplined. It's not just a bunch of ideas, it's a practical approach to dealing with life's ups and downs, helping you to live more intentionally and in control. In this guide, we're going to explore the main ideas behind Stoicism and show you how to apply them to today's challenges. You'll learn how to manage your thoughts, feelings and actions to match what's really important to you. Stoicism teaches us to focus on what we can change and let go of what we can't, finding peace in both action and acceptance. We'll keep coming back to some key ideas of Stoicism and there's a good reason for that. By hearing and practicing these ideas over and over, they start to become a part of how we live every day. This repeating is key to really making Stoicism work in your life, turning it from just a set of ideas into a new way to live. Whether you're dealing with tough times, looking for more meaning in life, or just want to feel more calm and collected, this guide has something for you. By the end of it, you won't just know about Stoicism, you'll have real steps you can take to make your life feel more under your control, facing whatever comes your way with confidence and calm. The great Marcus Aurelius is a great example of the ancient philosophy of Stoicism. In today's busy world, where outside noise can drown out our inner voice, Stoicism can help us find focus and purpose. Stoicism teaches us an important lesson, that focusing on ourselves can change our lives. We're going to dive deep into the deep ideas of Stoicism in our next study, figuring out how they fit into the fabric of our everyday lives. Imagine finding wisdom that has been passed down from generation to generation and is still useful today in the busy streets of New York City as it was in the Roman courts of ancient times. As we go on this trip together, you'll not only understand what Stoicism means by self-focus, but you'll also feel like you have the power to apply these timeless lessons to your everyday life. This is about growing as a person and developing a resilience that can withstand the storms of life, not just knowing them. Come with us as we start this life-changing trip here on the Trip of Wisdom. To find the unwavering strength that comes from within, let's rediscover ourselves. This is an idea that has deep roots in Stoic philosophy. In the Stoic tradition, there are three main principles that lead us. Wisdom goes beyond knowledge. It's the deep understanding of what we can control and what we can't. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher, said it best. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. The second virtue is courage, which is more than just being physically brave. It includes the bravery we need to face problems, the unknown, and even our own flaws. In the middle of life's problems and difficulties, it's about staying strong. In his deep wisdom, Marcus Aurelius says, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Temperance is the third virtue. It means learning to control yourself, live in moderation and be in tune with nature. It means controlling our wants and staying away from too much. Marcus Aurelius told us that temperance is important for happiness. Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself in your way of thinking. This virtue teaches us the value of balance and the power of a moderated lifestyle to bring about inner peace and joy. Seneca added to these timeless lessons by saying, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. This quote speaks to the modern man who is often caught up in fears that don't exist and social standards. These stoic ideals help us stay focused on our inner selves 
instead of stressing out about things going on around us in our busy world. Encourage us to see problems as chances to learn and grow, to look for wisdom in our experiences, and to live a balanced and moderate life. By putting these ideas into practice, we can stay true to our stoic path and deal with the challenges of modern life with a calm mind and a strong spirit. In the world of Stoicism, living in the present moment is the most important thing you can do. People who follow the Stoics' philosophy say that we should accept life as it is and not try to change it or judge it. This philosophy doesn't mean giving up and letting things happen. Instead, it's a call to see things as they really are and act from that place of awareness. When you wake up in the morning, think of what a valuable gift it is to be living, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love, as Marcus Aurelius, a wise man in this school of thought, put it. One of the most important ideas in Stoicism is that we can control how we respond to things that happen around us, but not how they happen themselves. In spite of life's unavoidable ups and downs, this understanding is essential for keeping mental balance and resilience. Marcus Aurelius offered timeless wisdom here. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. However, Stoicism also promotes awareness and meditation as ways to improve oneself. These habits give us control over our feelings and thoughts, which is a key skill in the art of self-focus. Regular meditation gives you more control over your mind, so outside events have less of an effect on your inner peace. Another lesson from the Stoics is to be strong when bad things happen. We always have to deal with problems and difficulties in life. Stoicism urges us to face these difficulties head on and to maintain our inner strength even in the most trying circumstances. By focusing on how we personally deal with problems, we can become stronger and more resilient after going through them. Think about a sailor sailing a rough sea. The sailor can't stop the storm, but they can move their ship. This metaphor is like the stoic idea that we should focus on our actions and emotions when things happen in life that we can't change. Resilience is a pillar in the deep path of Stoicism. This old philosophy tells us that we all have a huge amount of power inside us to deal with and overcome the problems we face in life. Think of this resilience as an inner fortress that won't give in, helping you handle life's storms with grace and strength. Remember that it's not enough to just get through the storm. You also need to learn how to dance in the rain. Stoicism puts a lot of value on virtue because it thinks it is the key to a happy life. Think of virtue as a guide that tells you what to do and how to make decisions. It's not just about having wisdom, courage, justice or temperance. It's about incorporating these traits into your everyday life. Working on developing these traits brings you closer to your true self and helps you grow in a way that is both deep and real. The main idea behind Stoicism is to find inner peace, a calmness that isn't affected by the chaos in the outside world. By lining up your deeds with your core values, you can actually achieve this peace, which is not just a faraway dream. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher, once said, he who lives in harmony with himself lives in harmony with the universe. If you focus on yourself and follow the philosophy of Stoicism, you can find peace in the chaos of life. You're becoming it on this path. A life of deep satisfaction and resilience is within reach with every step you take toward focusing on yourself, placing virtue first, and growing inner peace. To follow the road of Stoicism, you must not only understand these ideas, but also live by them every day. Being aware Appreciating the present moment and knowing the boundaries of our power are all things that Stoicism teaches us. With courage, it teaches us to deal with problems. Take these lessons to heart and let them make our lives better, giving us a sense of inner strength and peace. Anyone looking for help 
navigating the challenges of modern life with grace and resilience can turn to this old but timeless philosophy for help. According to Stoicism, focusing on oneself is not just a way to treat yourself well, it's a deep way to make the world a better place. This is especially true for guys between the ages of 30 and 65. This Stoic practice, which is based on self-examination, acceptance, making goals, controlling wants and practicing thanks, can change your life and is relevant to today's busy lives. It combines old wisdom with modern problems. A big part of Stoicism is the act of looking at yourself. It means setting aside time every day to think about your actions, responses and ideas. Important questions to ask yourself include What did I do well today? What could I do better? Did my actions match my core values? Being self-aware every day through this practice helps you see your skills and flaws, which leads to personal growth and development. It's like what the Stoic philosopher Seneca said, we are more often scared than hurt, and we suffer more in our minds than in reality. This quote shows how important it is to look inside ourselves to get rid of unfounded fears and gain a realistic view of our experiences. Accepting the present moment is another important part of Stoicism. We can't always change the unpredictable nature of life, which is marked by its highs and lows. What we can still control, though, is how we react to these events. Being open to amor fati, or the love of one's fate, teaches us to be happy with whatever life brings us, which leads to inner peace and calm. This philosophy isn't just about accepting things as they are. It's also about actively accepting all of life's events, good and bad, as important steps on the path to personal growth. Second, it's just as important to really focus on yourself to set goals that you can actually reach. There must be clear, attainable goals. Stoicism tells us to set goals that we can reach, like getting better at a skill or growing as a person. This method not only gives you a feeling of direction and purpose, but it also fits with the Stoic idea that we should focus on what we can control and accept what we can't. A big part of Stoic theory is how to deal with desire and repulsion. The Stoics think that a lot of our pain comes from wanting things we can't have and being afraid of things we can't avoid. By focusing on what we can control and letting go of the rest, we can free ourselves from pain and stress that aren't necessary. In today's world, where outside forces are always making our wants stronger, this principle is very important because it reminds us to focus on our inner values and what really counts. Lastly, being thankful is one of the most important Stoic virtues. A more comfortable and happy life can be reached by making it a habit to be grateful for what we have instead of dwelling on what we don't have. Today, when people are always looking for more, this practice is especially important because wanting more can make people unhappy. Being grateful keeps us in the present and helps us enjoy all the good things we already have. Focusing on oneself as a Stoic is a complex process that includes deep self-reflection, accepting that life is unpredictable, making realistic goals, controlling wants and dislikes, and learning to be grateful. Stoic philosophy is deeply rooted in these practices, which offer ancient wisdom that is surprisingly useful in today's busy world. They can help us live a life of satisfaction, resilience, and peaceful happiness. As the Stoics say, focusing on oneself is a life-changing act that leads to self-awareness, resilience, and a life more in line with one's core ideals. It's not just about getting somewhere on this road of self-improvement and personal growth. It's also about becoming the best version of yourself. The trip gives you happiness and a sense of meaning. The Stoic giants, who are very important in the world of Stoicism, are great examples of this trip. The way they lived and taught shows how Stoicism can have a big effect on human growth. 
During his time as ruler of Rome, Marcus Aurelius showed great stoic qualities. In the complicated world of kingdom government, his rule was characterized by wisdom and justice and served as a live model of self-control and virtue. Focusing on personal virtue and logic, his way of life has lessons that can be used for all time in leadership and personal morality. Another important figure in Stoicism is Seneca the Younger, who is known for his deep works on ethics and human nature. You can learn how to control your mind and feelings from Epictetus, who was a slave and later became a famous Stoic philosopher. Stoic thought is based on the idea that we can only control how we respond to things that happen to us, not what happens to us. His talks are full of wisdom on how to master yourself and build inner strength. Seneca, a Roman senator, was the epitome of Stoic virtue, showing unshakable courage and honesty in the face of Julius Caesar's autocracy. His life is a living example of the strength and resilience that result from a relentless dedication to virtue and self-improvement. The useful wisdom in his writings encourages people to look at themselves. Seneca's letters and writings are not just intellectual thoughts. They are also useful guidelines for living a life of virtue and peace. We suffer more often in our imaginations than in reality, he said at one point. This is a strong lesson to stay in the moment and focus on what we can change. Another great Stoic thinker, Musonius Rufus, said that philosophy is not just a mental exercise, but also a set of useful tools for living a good life. His lessons on self-discipline and morality show that he believes philosophy has the power to change people's lives. The lives and lessons of these great Stoics motivate us to start our own paths of self-improvement and inner peace. We can handle life's difficulties with poise and resilience by learning from their models and adopting Stoic principles, and we can grow into our best selves as a result. His lessons show us how important it is to apply Stoic ideas to our everyday lives, turning virtue into a way of life instead of just an idea. Rufus's focus on how philosophy can be used in real life is very similar to the Stoic view that personal virtue has the power to change people. Heracles, who was famous for his work on ethics and the idea of wikiosis, or the circular rings of concern, stressed how important it is to start with oneself and then eventually include family, society, and finally all of humanity in our circle of concern. The Stoic view says that if we work on improving ourselves, we are better able to make the world a better place. This thought beautifully shows this. The lives of these great Stoics show how much Stoic philosophy can help people grow and be happy. We learn how to focus on ourselves, not in a selfish way, but as a way to grow in virtue and wisdom by looking at what they did. Through Stoicism, we learn that taking care of our inner selves makes us better able to help others. People who follow this philosophy are encouraged to have the four cardinal virtues, wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. This makes us better able to help others. Remember what the wise Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This is what Stoicism is all about, mind control and inner strength. Focusing on our own growth and virtue not only makes our own lives better, but it also makes other people look up to us as examples of strength and wisdom. Focusing on yourself doesn't mean you're shutting out the world. It means you're getting ready to interact with it in a more positive and helpful way. In the end, the Stoic path is about looking within to find our inner strength and virtue. This gives us the power to make a difference in the world. We can handle the ups and downs of life with a calm mind and a strong spirit if we follow the examples of Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, Seneca, Rufus and Heracles and heed the advice of Marcus Aurelius.
The focus on self-focus in Stoicism is not a call to loneliness or egocentrism. Instead, it comes from a deep understanding that by taking care of your inner self, you improve your interactions with other people. Imagine that you are a calm lake. When you are at peace with yourself, the stillness of your water makes it easier for other people to see their images. You can be a rock of support and understanding as a friend, partner, or family member if you feel calm. Your inner peace gives you and the people around you strength. As a Stoic, you have to commit to daily self-examination and becoming more self-aware. This habit of reflecting on yourself helps you make better choices in your relationships by giving you more information and understanding. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, said, We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. This quote really brings home the Stoic idea that being present and attentive in our relationships helps us connect better. Focusing on yourself makes it less likely that you will act without thinking and misunderstand something which can lead to guilt. You instead build a life with meaning and direction. This way of thinking really hits home in today's busy world where we can easily forget about our inner peace and, as a result, our relationships. These days, our world moves quickly. The stoic practice of focusing on oneself helps us keep our inner peace. In turn, this makes our relationships with other people stronger. It's easy to see the lesson here. When we work on our inner growth, we improve our ties with others, which makes our lives better overall. In its most basic form, this is what Stoicism is all about. This old philosophy has timeless wisdom for the modern soul. We will now talk about what Stoicism is all about. Stoicism is a philosophy based on four virtues, justice, wisdom, temperance, and courage. These traits are not just ideas. They are useful tools for growing as people that can help us live a good life focused on ourselves. The virtue of justice is at the heart of Stoicism. It's not enough to just follow moral rules. We need to know our place in the world and make a good difference. According to the Stoics, justice means being a good citizen, a responsible family member, and fair in everything you do. This virtue helps people get along with each other and gives life meaning. Think about the story of Cincinnatus, an old Roman who was a great example of this virtue. He left his farm to be a leader for Rome during a crisis, but he quickly gave up power and went back to living a simple life when the crisis was over. Putting the good of everyone else ahead of his own gain was a sign of justice in his actions. In Stoicism, the second virtue, wisdom, is seen as the most important. It's about figuring out what's important, making smart decisions, and comprehending how people work. Wisdom isn't just knowledge, it's also usefulness, which pushes us to think about ourselves and learn more. It's like Socrates' wisdom, who reportedly said he knew nothing even though he was very smart. His wisdom came from knowing what he didn't know and always trying to learn more. Temperance, the third virtue, is all about balance and self-control. It shows us how to control our feelings and wants so that we don't go too far and cause unbalance and pain. Having temperance is like walking a wire. It helps you stay balanced in every part of your life. Think about the story of Buddha. He learned the value of a balanced life after living a life of wealth and then a life of extreme abstinence. The final virtue, courage, is more than just being brave. It means having the resilience to face problems, moral conundrums, and unknowns. There are more parts of your courage than just your body. It's about being strong in your values, even when things go wrong. This virtue is shown by the story of Nelson Mandela, who fought against racism with steadfast courage. A real example of courage is shown by his strength in the face of huge problems and his dedication to his beliefs. When you put these traits together, they make a strong foundation for focusing on yourself. 
we not only improve our lives, but also have a good effect on the world when we practice wisdom, justice, courage, and temperance. Stoicism tells us that focusing on ourselves isn't selfish. It's how we grow our inner values so that we can live a meaningful life. Stoicism puts a lot of weight on the present moment, which fits perfectly with the idea that you should focus on yourself and not other people. This philosophy tells us that we can't change the past or the future because they are both full of unknowns. But we have power in the moment. Life happens in a split second, but it's important to keep our attention on that one time. Imagine that your mind is a ship that is always moving. It might be floating toward the beaches of regrets from the past or going into the rough seas of fears about the future. In these situations, practicing awareness is very important. It's okay to bring your thoughts back to the present moment when they wander. Being mindful is more than just being aware. It's about putting all of your attention on the present moment. It's about enjoying the wealth of the present moment, whether you're doing something small or big in your life. By doing this, boring things become events full of life, which helps you enjoy the little things that make up your daily life. The Stoic mindset cultivates a sense of purpose, resilience and inner peace, in addition to changing the way you view things. It gives you the strength to focus on yourself in a way that isn't selfish, but helps you grow and be happy. Focusing on yourself doesn't mean being alone. It means taking care of your inner world so you can interact with the outside world better. Let us now look at the life of Zeno of Citium, who started the school of Stoicism. He lost everything after his ship sank. Instead of focusing on the things he had lost in the past or worried about what might happen in the future, Zeno focused on the present. This is what led him to philosophy and, eventually, to creating Stoicism. No matter how hard things get in life, his story shows how important it is to live in the present. And on your path to become your best self, you shouldn't ignore other people. Instead, you should focus on making a strong base within yourself. As you work on your inner peace and resilience, you become better able to make the world a better place. Finally, let this be a lesson and piece of advice for you, the audience. As you go through life's challenges, enjoy the present moment, because it's the only time you really have. In order to live a more meaningful and satisfying life, where inner peace and resilience are your constant partners, let this focus on the present serve as your guide. Remember what Marcus Aurelius said, confine yourself to the present. Let this simple but deep wisdom guide you to a life of focus, peace, and satisfaction. Think about starting a day full of stoic wisdom, a trip of introspection and self-reflection. Not only do you wake up to the light of day when the sun rises, but you also feel deeply aware and grateful. Right now is a gift and a new beginning. In this case, you're practicing the old stoic technique of premeditatio malorum by picturing yourself thinking about the problems you might face today, not with fear, but with calm readiness. This mental practice isn't negative. Instead, it's a powerful way to prepare your mind for the unknowns of the day, which will help you stay calm when bad things happen. Your morning continues with a promise to take care of your body. If you want to honor the stoic ideals of self-care and resilience, this is your ode to a jog the peaceful flow of yoga, or the energetic atmosphere of the gym. Keep in mind that you're not just improving your body. This practice will strengthen your mind and give you the tools you need to handle life's rough seas better, as Seneca once said, a sound mind in a sound body. As you sit down to eat lunch, you practice temperance. This meal is more than just food. It's a time to practice being a stoic. The virtue of temperance is something you keep in mind when selecting your food. Not only is each bite enjoyed for its taste and texture, but it's also seen as a sign of self-control and balance. You are aware of not indulging too much and instead focus on feeding your body in a healthy way. 
This action shows the stoic idea of modesty and serves as a warning that any kind of excess can throw our inner balance off. As the afternoon goes on, it brings the problems that come with living. These are not just problems, they are chances to develop stoic resilience. You can use every failure to remember yourself of the stoic values and your commitment to growing as a person. You don't look at these problems with anger. Instead, you see them as opportunities to develop your character and strength. An attitude like this turns daily problems into lessons that teach us something which is in line with the stoic idea that what doesn't hurt us makes us better. In the evening, it's time to think about yourself. You carefully think back on your day, looking at what you did and how you felt. Self-examination is an important part of stoic practice, not just a habit. You're aware of the times when your acts may not have been in line with your values and can see where you can improve. The stoic practice of always trying to get better is deeply based in this process of thought. Right now is the time to be honest with yourself, to see your weaknesses and strengths. Marcus Aurelius said, look deeply into yourself. There is a source of strength that will always spring up if you will always look there. When you think about these words, you become clear and recommit to living your life according to your values. As you get ready for sleep at night, you think about the idea of Amor Fati, which means love of fate. The good and bad things that happen to you every day are seen as necessary parts of your trip. This acceptance is not a lackadaisical giving up, it is an active taking in of what life has to offer. That night, you go to sleep feeling thankful because you know that every moment, good or bad, helps you grow. This practice is a reminder of the stoic ideal of accepting life as it is and finding wisdom and strength in each experience. Your weekly and monthly thoughts give you a chance to look back at how well you're living up to the stoic ideals of temperance, courage, wisdom and justice. These are not just vague ideas, they are also step-by-step -step instructions for living a happy life. You set clear goals for yourself to grow, which makes your actions more in line with these ideals. This ongoing process of thinking about things and making goals shows how dedicated the Stoic is to learning new things and getting better all the time. It's a trip that not only makes your life better, but it also lets you make other people's lives better. Living by the Stoic idea of being at peace with the world as the day goes on and you get deep into your work. You'll use the stoic idea of the dichotomy of power as a guide. You have things to do, choices to make, and maybe even problems you didn't expect. In this situation, you focus your energy wisely on things you can control, such as your actions, your state of mind, and your responses. Giving up control isn't the point. The point is to use your power of choice. When problems come up, you remember what Epictetus said. We cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. In this way, you don't feel useless at work, but instead stay calm, logical and aggressive. You aren't just going through the motions during the day. You are living each moment with purpose, led by quiet wisdom. This isn't an inactive way of life, it's an active one where you're always learning, changing and growing. You're not ignoring other people when you focus on yourself. Instead, you're building up your inner strength and clarity so you can be more present, caring and effective in all the interactions you have. At the end of the day, you think about what you've done, the problems you've had and the lessons you've learned. This thought isn't just thinking about yourself. It's a serious way to improve yourself and grow as a person. In this quiet moment of thought, you consider the words of Marcus Aurelius. The best revenge is to be unlike him who committed the injustice. Digging into the lessons of Stoic thinkers is not just a school assignment. It is an important way to gain wisdom and strengthen 
the Stoic attitude. Not only do we learn more about how complicated life is, but we also learn how to incorporate these ideas into our everyday lives. The Stoic Road also stresses how important it is to get along with other people. It shows us that justice isn't just a nice idea, but a real way to show kindness and compassion in the things we do every day. This part of Stoicism is more than just how you act. It also means helping your community, whether it's through charity work or small acts of kindness. Stoics are urged to improve their surroundings by building relationships based on virtue and a real care for other people's well-being. When we apply Stoic ideas to our lives, it changes everything. It means making sure that our actions are in line with our ideals and that every day is a chance to work on our own growth while also making the world a better place. We can deal with the difficulties in life with resilience and composure if we practice Stoicism every day. Let's look at the story of Cato the Younger, who was a famous Stoic, to show this. Cato lived a life that showed the strength and virtue of loyalty and resilience. He stuck to his beliefs, even though he was under a lot of political pressure and having personal problems. This shows that true strength comes from staying true to your ideals. His life shows us how important it is to stay on our own road and not let outside events or other people's opinions change us. The story of Seneca, who was also a Stoic scholar, also has lessons that can be learned. Even though Seneca was wealthy and well-known, he stressed the value of inner wealth over material wealth. He thought that real happiness comes from inside and doesn't depend on things outside of oneself. Instead of looking for approval or satisfaction from outside sources, his lessons encourage us to look within for happiness and strength. Adopting the Stoic philosophy can help us find our way through life, especially when we concentrate on ourselves instead of other people. There are some challenges on this road, but it is also very rewarding. With the wisdom of Stoicism in mind, let's look at six common problems you might face and how to solve them. First, there's the fear of change. It's normal to be scared of change, but remember that Stoicism teaches us to see problems as chances to learn and grow. Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius said, the universe is change, our life is what our thoughts make it. As Marcus Aurelius said, welcome change as a chance to grow. But there are also pulls from outside sources, like work, family, and social standards. Having these things can make it seem like a luxury to focus on yourself, but it's important to set limits and put self-care first. You can better handle these outside expectations if you take care of yourself. You know what Seneca said? We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Don't let your supposed responsibilities take away from your need to take care of yourself. Today, there are lots of temptations and other things that can take our attention away from self-improvement. Set aside time every day for stoic activities as a way to deal with this. Commit to avoiding as many distractions as possible during these times. As Epictetus said, no man is free who is not master of himself. But being impatient can also get in the way. It's simple to get angry when things don't seem to be moving forward. Stoicism, on the other hand, is an ongoing process. You get closer to your goals every day that you practice. Patience is not about waiting, but being able to keep a good attitude while waiting, Marcus Aurelius told us. If you feel alone on your stern path, loneliness might set in. Self-care doesn't mean cutting yourself off from the world, though. Join silent groups, look for teachers, or look for people who share your mind. Seneca said, True happiness is to enjoy the present without worrying about what will happen in the future. Finally, there is emotional response. Stoicism teaches people how to control their emotions, but it's okay to feel things. When things get hard, we practice being mindful and aware of ourselves. Take a moment to breathe before you respond. 
Epictetus said, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak, and this is consistent with his wisdom. To sum up, following the Stoic principles of focusing on yourself is both beneficial and difficult. To get past these problems, you need to be open to change, deal with outside pressures, fight desires, be patient, look for community, and keep your emotions in check. Stoicism isn't just a philosophy, it's a way to find inner peace, grow as a person, and do something every day. Let the words of the Stoic Masters help and support you as you face these problems. They will remember you that the way you get better is just as important as the end result. Ancient philosophy's light of wisdom shines brightly as a powerful tool for self-reflection and personal growth. In order to keep going, you have to look at your life and the world around you with new eyes every day. Your health and the decisions you make can be significantly impacted by this change in your frame of mind, leading to a happier life. Differentiating power is one of the most important ideas in Stoic philosophy. This idea teaches us to tell the difference between things we can control and things we can't. Focus on what you can change, your thoughts, actions, decisions, and responses. It's a simple but strong idea. These are the places where your real power lies. On the other hand, you should be aware of outside events, other people's acts, and situations you can't change, but you shouldn't let them control your inner peace. When you understand this, you can break free from the chains of needless worry and make the most important decisions in your area of influence. Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. This says it all. We should focus on what we can control and accept what we can't with grace. The love of fate, or amor fati, is another important concept in Stoic philosophy. You are encouraged by this principle to accept and love everything that life brings you. Stoicism encourages a warm acceptance of life's events, seeing them as essential components of your trip through life rather than resistance or anger. In your daily life, show amor fati by being open to both happiness and sadness. When you face problems or hurdles, tell yourself that they are not just problems, but also chances to grow and develop as a person. Every problem teaches you something, and one of the most important things you can do to become patient is to learn to value these lessons. Memento mori is a Latin saying that means remember death. This may sound sad at first, but it's really about realizing that life is short. It is a strong warning to live in line with your real ideals and to enjoy every moment. By thinking about how short life is, you develop a sense of urgency that helps you focus on what really counts. This habit will help you make the most of your time, set priorities for your goals, and stay focused on your path instead of getting sidetracked by other things. In Stoic philosophy, the right to choose is just as important. The idea behind this theory is that you always have the power to choose how to react, no matter what. This thought gives you a lot of power because it puts the responsibility for your response firmly on your shoulders. In everyday life, this means that you have to keep telling yourself of this power. When you face problems or failures, think about how you can respond in a way that is in line with your beliefs and values. A simple change in your state of mind can often change how you react, leading to better and more helpful results. The idea of not caring about what happens in the outside world is another important part of Stoicism. Stoics think that things that happen in the outside world are mostly neutral, whether we think they are good or bad. What really counts is how you handle these events. You can find inner peace and happiness with this philosophy because it frees you from being controlled by outside events. Practicing this kind of indifference means changing how you think about the things that happen in your life. When bad things happen, look at them as chances to grow and improve as a person. 
Changing your attitude is an important part of getting better at yourself. If you work on yourself every day, you'll become a more moral and well-rounded person. Now think about the story of a farmer who lost his horse, which his friends thought was bad. But the farmer just said, we'll see. The next day, the horse came back with a group of wild horses, and the neighbors told him how lucky he was. Again, the farmer said, we'll see. Later, his son hurt his leg while trying to train one of the wild horses, and the other people in the neighborhood felt bad for him. When war broke out, and all young men were taken except for the farmer's son, the neighbors finally understood the farmer's wisdom. This story shows how Stoics think about the balance of outside events and how important it is to react calmly. You can live a more meaningful and peaceful life if you follow these recommendations. Don't forget to honor Memento Mori and live each day in line with your beliefs. Use your freedom of choice every time and don't pay attention to what's going on around you. Instead, focus on how you're reacting. These habits will not only help you grow as a person, but they will also help you live a more satisfying and moral life. If you take a trip with Stoic philosophy, you'll find that it has effects that go far beyond helping you improve yourself. You'll see the world differently and experience big changes in your life because of it. Let's look at these factors that change things. Start by saying that Stoicism brings peace and calm to your inner self. You learn to be in the present and not care about the chaos going on around you, which gives you a deep sense of inner calm. When you pay more attention to your actions and decisions instead of what other people do, life's changes don't bother you as much. Another thing that Stoic practice does is make you more self-aware. It's not just a philosophy, it's a way of life that requires you to think about yourself every day. This helps you figure out your skills and flaws. This journey of self-discovery helps you act in a way that is true to who you are and makes you more aware of your ideals and goals. Stoicism also stresses doing good things for other people. It's not just about growing as a person, it's also about living in an honest way and making a difference in the world. Stoic qualities like wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance help and encourage those around you, which has a good effect on society as a whole. Stoicism helps you be patient when bad things happen. Resilience and moral steadfastness are used to meet challenges rather than depression. With this philosophy, you can handle the hard things in life with a steady mind. Stoicism also changes the way you interact with other people. You become a more understanding and caring friend, partner and family member as a result of the justice, kindness and fairness lessons it teaches. People in your group will find strength in the inner peace you work on. Another thing that Stoic practice does is help people make better decisions. Stoicism helps you make decisions that are in line with your core values and principles. This gives you focus and purpose as you go through life's challenges. You can make choices that are true to yourself with the help of the wisdom you gain from studying Stoic ideas. Finally, Stoicism is a way to improve yourself and be happy. Self-improvement is at the heart of this philosophy. By focused on yourself and having a good life, you can achieve deep personal growth and long-lasting happiness. You have power over your inner mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength, as the Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once said. For many people, focusing on themselves through the view of Stoicism is like steering a ship through the vast and often rough sea of life. The development of inner peace and self-improvement are aided by this old philosophy, which is grounded in real wisdom. Engaging with and following the Stoic principles in our daily lives starts a process of change that can result in big changes in our personalities. Stoicism is not a strict or fixed religion. Instead, it is a system that is easy to change and adapt to the complicated world we live in now. It promotes the ideals of self-reflection, self-awareness, and always getting better. 
finding inner peace and happiness separate from the constantly changing outside world is easier with this philosophy. We can live a purposeful, patient and peaceful life by incorporating stoic values like wisdom, courage, justice and temperance into our daily lives. In turn, this makes our relationships stronger and our services to society bigger. Stoicism has the power to change us by making us focus on ourselves, which can lead to changes that last a lifetime. To sum up Stoicism, the great philosopher Marcus Aurelius said, Do not waste time arguing about what a good man should be. This quote shows how important it is to focus on personal growth rather than seeking approval from others. By focusing on getting better, we start the process of becoming the best versions of ourselves. In addition to our own gain, this path gives others hope and courage. Focusing on oneself is an ancient Stoic practice that is even more useful in modern life, where there are many distractions and a lot of stress. In the middle of chaos, it provides a safe haven of tranquility and a guide to resilience. People are not told to be selfish when they are told to focus on themselves. Instead, they are told to build a strong, good character that can handle life's difficulties and make the world a better place. When someone insulted you, did it make you feel mad, hurt or ashamed? Sometimes you wish you could say or do something that would make them feel bad about what they did or said. No, you're not the only one this happens to. Many people find it hard to deal with comments and put-downs, especially in the world of social media and internet trolling we live in now. If I told you there was a way to deal with insults with class, grace and wisdom, would you believe me? A way to protect your health and self-esteem while also making the person who insulted you see how stupid they were and respect you more. A method that is based on an age-old philosophy that has passed the test of time and has been used by some of the smartest and most powerful minds in history. That is how Stoicism works. Building inner strength, resilience and calmness in the face of trouble is what it does. It also gives us useful tools and methods to deal with insults and other problems that life brings our way. Now I'm going to give you 25 Stoic lessons that will help you handle insults smartly. These lessons are based on what Stoic thinkers like Seneca, Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius said. These people had a lot of problems and insults in their lives, but they never let them get in the way of their happiness and peace of mind. By using what you've learned, you can turn any insult into a chance to learn, grow and get better. You can also make someone who insults you instantly feel bad about what they did and say, and maybe even change how they feel about you for the better. First, let's get started. Instruction 1. Insults don't hurt us. Let's learn from Stoicism's first and most important lesson. Insults don't hurt us. These things happen in the outside world and don't affect our real selves, which are our good and sensible minds. It is not he who reviles or strikes you who insults you, but your opinion that these things are insulting, said Epictetus, a once slave turned stoic master. This means that what someone says or does to us doesn't insult us. How we think about it and respond to it does. When we let someone attack us, we give them power over our feelings and decisions. But we can take that power away by choosing not to be upset and seeing the insult for what it is, a sound or an action that doesn't mean anything. Insults were like dogs barking or flies buzzing. They're annoying but not dangerous, according to the Stoics. They only show how stupid and weak the person is who is insulting us because they are sad or nervous themselves. They don't get to our heart, which is our reason and virtue. The best way to get even with someone who has hurt you is not to become like them, wrote Marcus Aurelius, the Roman ruler and Stoic philosopher. So the next time someone insults you, remember that it doesn't matter to you. 
Do not let it get in the way of your happiness and peace of mind. You shouldn't let them enjoy seeing you upset or angry. Instead, keep your cool and show them that you are bigger than their stupid words and actions. That's it for lesson two. Have fun. The second thing Stoicism tells us is that the best way to deal with insults is to laugh them off. If someone insults you, humor can take away their power and make them look stupid. Also, it can ease the stress and make you feel better. The best way to bear insults is to make fun of them, said Seneca, a Roman politician and Stoic author. The Stoics were not as serious and straight-faced as some people might think. They had a sharp and witty sense of humor that they often used to deal with insults and ridicule. Someone called Theogenes of Sinope, the founder of cynicism and an influence on Stoicism, a dog. He replied, yes, and you are my master, for you throw bones at me and I catch them. Someone asked the lame Epictetus how he became a philosopher. He said, the same way that you became a human being. And when someone said Marcus Aurelius was a philosopher, he said, if only it were true. So the next time someone insults you, try to find similar quotes. Say something sarcastic, funny, or a pun. Be funny and sure of yourself to show them that you don't take what they say seriously. In addition to making you feel better, this will make them feel bad about themselves. Third, see the insult for what it is. Stoicism's third lesson is that we should see insults for what they really are. We shouldn't take it at face value. Instead, we should think about it logically and objectively. We should ask ourselves if the insult is legitimate. Is it important? Matters it? Should we give it our attention and answer? Stoics thought that we should only care about things that are true, important, within our control, and within our control. They thought that everything else was unimportant and did not matter. Don't explain your philosophy, live it, Epictetus said. This means that when someone insults us, we shouldn't respond emotionally, but logically. We should not let our egos get in the way. Instead, we should use wisdom and logic, not protective, but honest and humble. We ought to be interested and open-minded rather than outraged. It's okay to say the attack is true. We should learn from it. You should see it as a chance to get better and fix what's wrong. We should thank the person who insulted us for showing us our flaws and making us better people. People should avoid and dismiss insults that aren't true. This is not the time or energy to try to prove ourselves or protect our image. People shouldn't be able to tell us who we are or what we stand for. Only we can do that. Remember that what we do speaks louder than what we say and that the truth will always win out. If the insult doesn't mean anything, we should just laugh it off and move on. It should not take our attention away from our ideals and goals. Not what other people think or say about us, but what matters to us and what we can change. Remember that we're not here to make everyone happy. We're here to live our lives the way our nature and reason tell us to. We ought to react with kindness and wisdom if the insult is significant. Instead of getting angry or violent, we should show kindness and understanding. Rather than putting ourselves down to the level of the person who insulted us, we should raise them up to our level. We should ask for forgiveness instead of getting even, not hurting them, but helping them. The next time someone attacks you, think about what kind of abuse it is. Do not let it make you feel bad. Instead, let it make you feel good. Avoid getting hurt and focus on getting better. Stay positive and don't let it make you worse. Part 4. How to handle comments that are too harsh. The fourth thing that Stoicism teaches us is that we should act with courage and justice when we are subjected to extreme forms of insult, like abuse. It's not enough to just insult someone verbally. Harassment also includes physical or mental attacks that hurt our rights and sense of worth. Not something we can ignore or laugh off, but something we need to face and stop. Like some people might think, the Stoics were not quiet or weak. Instead, 
They were active and strong, and they stood up for themselves and others. They thought it was our responsibility to stand up for justice and to protect our fellow humans. Seneca once said, It is the duty of a brave man to put up with what is bad, but not with what is shameful. We shouldn't let them scare or control us. Instead, we should stand up to them and reveal them. Don't suffer alone. Get help and support instead. They should be reported and put on trial for their abuse, not us. Stoics also told us that we shouldn't hate or dislike the harasser, but should feel sorry for them and teach them. Instead of seeing them as enemies, we should see them as fellow humans who are lost and evil, not wanting them hurt, but wanting them well, not to kill them, but to change them for the better. When someone bothers you, deal with it with courage and justice. As Marcus Aurelius once said, the best way to get even is not to become like the wrongdoer. It will only make you stronger, not weaker. Stay positive and let it make you better. Be appreciative of the chance to put virtue into practice in Lesson 5. Stoicism tells us to be thankful for the chance to put virtue into practice as our fifth lesson. When someone insults us, we shouldn't think of it as bad luck, but as good luck. It is not a problem, but a way to solve it. It should not be seen as a curse, but as a good thing. The Stoics thought that everything that happens to us is either good, bad, or neutral. They said that virtue, which is having good character and actions, and vice, which is having bad character and actions, were the only things that were good and bad, respectively. They also said that everything else was neutral, which means that it didn't affect our happiness and well-being. The Stoics also thought that everything that happens to us is part of the universe's divine plan, which is good, logical, and orderly. They said that the universe gives us what we need, not what we want, and that it tests us not to break us, but to make us stronger. No one is more unhappy than he who never faces adversity, for he is not allowed to prove himself, said Seneca. This means that when someone insults us, we shouldn't be angry or upset, but we should thank and respect them. Not a loss, but comments. That shouldn't be seen as a problem, but as a way to move forward. It's a gift, not a sentence. The only thing that counts is virtue, so we should see it as a chance to practice it. By analyzing the insult logically and clearly, we should see it as a chance to practice wisdom. We should see it as a chance to be brave by standing up to the insult with courage and confidence. As a chance to be fair and kind, we should see it as a chance to practice justice. We should see it as a chance to get better at controlling our feelings and urges. Therefore, the next time someone insults you, be thankful for the chance to show virtue. Keep it from making you sad. Instead, let it make you happy. Stay positive and let it make you better. Lesson 6. Remember that you are a person among other people. The sixth thing Stoicism tells us is to always remember that we are just a person among other people. If someone insults us, we shouldn't think of ourselves as better or worse than them. Instead, we should see ourselves as linked to and equal with everyone. No matter how far away we are from the rest of the world, we should not feel alone. Instead, we should feel like we are a part of it. Stoics thought that we are all brothers and sisters with the same origin and destiny. We are all children of God with the same father and mother, and we are all rational and social animals with a common nature and a common reason. When someone attacks us, we shouldn't forget or ignore that we are human and related to them. As Marcus Aurelius said, meditate often on the interconnectedness and mutual interdependence of all things in the universe. It's important not to belittle or despise the person who insulted us. Instead, we should treat them with respect and common humanity. Instead of pushing them away or getting into a fight, we should connect with them and work with them. Loving and helping them is better than hating and hurting them. They are human beings just like us, 
with their own traits and vices, joys and sorrows, hopes and fears, and strength and flaws. It is important to remember that they are a person who can make mistakes and learn from them, who can grow and change, who can be better and do better. It's important to remember that as humans, we have a job to act in a way that fits our nature and makes sense, to live in peace with others and ourselves, to work for the greater good, and to be overall good people. When someone insults you, remember that you are a person among other people. Avoid letting it make you forget or lose your humanity. Instead, remember and accept it. The Stoic philosophy should be taught to the person who is insulting you in Lesson 7. Stoicism gives us the Stoic philosophy as our seventh lesson. As they insult us, we shouldn't think of it as a waste of time, but as a useful service. This is something that should help us, not hurt us. Doing it shouldn't seem like a favor, but a job. Stoics thought that we have a duty to share our knowledge and wisdom with others, especially those who don't know any better. They thought that it was our duty to teach and inform others, especially those who are sad and depressed. These people thought that it was our job to help and heal others, especially those who were hurting and suffering. So, when someone insults us, we shouldn't avoid or ignore them. We should talk to them. As Seneca said, the wise man will not keep his wisdom to himself, but will share it with others for the benefit of mankind. They shouldn't be judged or criticized. Instead, we should teach and guide them. It's not okay to make fun of or insult them. Instead, we should accept and value them. People can make their lives and personalities better by learning about the Stoic philosophy. Stoic ideas can help them deal with their problems, so we should teach them about them. Stoic ways of living can help them reach their goals and be happy, so we should teach them. They should be taught with kindness and care in a way that is clear and easy to understand and by using examples and stories. We should teach them not to force or push, but to ask and convince. They need to learn not to blame or judge, but to understand and care. Teaching them is good for both of us. We should teach them things that will help us as well as them. Teachers should teach their students not only how to change others, but also how to change themselves. Epictetus said, Every difficulty in life presents us with an opportunity to turn inward and to invoke our own inner resources. The trials we endure can and should introduce us to our strengths. So the next time someone insults you, teach them the Stoic philosophy. It shouldn't make you angry. It should make you thankful. This shouldn't make you greedy. It should make you kind. Remember that nothing lasts forever. As the eighth lesson from Stoicism, we should keep in mind that nothing lasts forever. If someone insults us, we shouldn't think of it as a constant fact of life. Instead, we should see it as something that happens from time to time and changes. It's not a big deal or a serious matter. We should think of it as a small and unimportant event. According to the Stoics, everything in the world can change and break down, and nothing is fixed or safe. They thought that fate and luck controlled everything in the world and that nothing could be known for sure. They thought that there was nothing absolute or objective in the world and that everything can be seen and understood from different points of view. According to Marcus Aurelius, time is a river, a violent current of events glimpsed once and already carried past us and another follows and is gone. This means that when someone insults us, we shouldn't hold on to it, but should let it go and move on. We should forget about it and forgive those who hurt us. We should not make it bigger or smaller. Instead, we should make it more realistic. Don't forget that the insult won't last forever. It will fade and go away. We should remember that the person who insulted us will change and die. As time goes on, we should remember that we will change and die. Let's remember that the insult is not important or serious. It's just a joke. We should remember that the person who insulted us is weak and doesn't matter. This insult doesn't define or limit us. 
We are much more than that. Don't let someone insult you again. Remember that nothing lasts forever. Do not let it stress you out. Instead, get cool. It shouldn't make you sad. It should make you happy. 9. Be the best person you can be. Stoicism's ninth lesson is that we should be the best versions of ourselves. People who insult us shouldn't see it as an excuse or a reason to do something. Instead, we should see it as a challenge and a reason to do something. As input and a victory, we shouldn't see it as a loss or a fail. The Stoics thought that each of us has the ability and capacity to be the wisest and most moral person we can be. They thought that we can always do and be better and that we have the freedom and duty to choose how we live and act. They thought the point of life was to follow our nature and reason and that by doing so, we could always be happy and free. It is not because things are hard that we don't dare. It is because we do not dare that they are hard, said Seneca. This means that when someone insults us, we shouldn't lower or give up our standards. Instead, we should raise and support them. We shouldn't give up on our dreams. Instead, we should go after them and make them come true. We should not be satisfied with mediocrity. Instead, we should aim for greatness. As the best versions of ourselves, we shouldn't let insults bother us. Instead, we should use them to get better and grow. People who don't take attacks personally and react with ease and respect are the best versions of themselves. If we want to be the best versions of ourselves, we should not take insults personally and instead rise above them with wisdom and virtue. So be the best person you can be the next time someone attacks you. Don't let it bring you down. Raise yourself up. Stay positive and let it make you better. Stoicism's tenth lesson is that being insulted can make us stronger. We do not have to see them as attacks or threats. We can see them as tests or tasks. We can use them to show our values, like justice, patience, courage, and wisdom. Also, we can use what they say to help us look at ourselves and see if what they say is true or useful. We can fix our mistakes and get better if there is. That's fine. We can just ignore them and move on. The Roman politician and Stoic thinker Seneca once said, fire tests gold, suffering tests brave men. Stoicism's 11th lesson is that we will always be insulted. We can't please everyone or avoid criticism, no matter how good, wise or powerful we are. There'll always be people who don't like us, don't agree with us or admire us. It's inevitable that we will make mistakes, hurt someone's feelings or not live up to their hopes. This is just how things are, so we shouldn't be shocked or upset by it. To quote Epictetus, if you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. The twelfth thing Stoicism tells us is that insults only last for a short time. They don't last long, just like everything else in the world. Not long-lasting and not important in the long run. They shouldn't change our mood, our happiness or our self-esteem. We also shouldn't hold grudges, try to get even, or think too much about the past. We should think about the future and live in the present. According to Seneca, time heals what reason cannot. Thirteenth lesson, don't take attacks personally. It may sound like this is easier said than done, but it is possible with practice and the right frame of mind. According to the Stoics, attacks are not about us, but about the person who says them. The Roman ruler and Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius said, It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. When someone insults us, they are showing that they don't know what they're talking about or are in pain. Because they are hurting themselves, they want to hurt us. They're putting their own flaws, worries, or anger on us. They perceive us differently than we perceive them. We should feel sorry for them because they lack kindness and wisdom, so we shouldn't take what they say to heart. 
I think we should focus on our own values and ideals instead of letting what other people say affect our happiness or sense of self-worth. They shouldn't be able to interfere with our peace of mind, so we should stay cool. Epictetus, a former slave who became a Stoic teacher, said, Remember that to be hurt, it's not enough to be hit or insulted. You must believe that you are being hurt. If someone is able to provoke you, know that your mind is partly to blame. The fourteenth lesson is to not lose your cool when someone insults you. This means that we shouldn't let our feelings control us and shouldn't say or do something that we might regret later. The Stoics teach us that we can choose how to react to any situation and that we should always be smart and good. Stoics tell us that anger is dangerous and when we are offended, anger is one of the most common and harmful feelings that people feel. It's normal and human to feel angry, but it's also damaging and illogical. When we're angry, we lose our ability to think clearly and reason, which makes us do stupid or dangerous things. Anger also hurts us more than the person who insulted us because it drains our energy, makes us less calm, and is bad for our health. Roman politician and Stoic author Seneca said, Anger is an acid that can do more harm to the vessel in which it is stored than to anything on which it is poured. Because of this, we shouldn't let our anger take over, but should instead control it and use it for good. Instead of responding to insults with more insults, we should choose kindness or silence. Instead of getting back at people, we should seek justice or forgiveness. The disagreement shouldn't get worse. Instead, it should get less bad or go away. A famous self-defense expert, Tim Larkin, says, We should always use the three-day test. Should we be sitting in jail or lying in a pine box three days from now? Was the escalation worth it? Probably not, right? Lesson 15. Don't put yourself down to the level of someone who insults you. In other words, we shouldn't lower ourselves to their level, give up our values, or lose our honor. Stoics teach us that we should always act in a way that fits our logical and social nature. The things that make us who we are, wisdom, justice, courage, and self-control, should always guide how we act. Stoics tell us that what we say and do defines us, not what other people say or do to us. We are not responsible for what other people do, but we are accountable for what we do. That which judges us is not what other people think, but what we think about ourselves. Marcus Aurelius said, the best way to get back at someone who hurt you is to be unlike them. When someone insults us, they are trying to make us act like them and give up our moral high ground. They want us to forget what we stand for and who we are. Their goal is for us to lose respect for ourselves and others. This means we shouldn't fall for their trick. Instead, we should rise above it. Instead of copying their bad habits, we should show off our strengths. We shouldn't let them change who we are. Instead, we should let them strengthen who we are. We shouldn't let them put us down. Instead, we should rise above them. The more we value things outside our control, the less control we have, Epictetus said. The sixteenth lesson is not to look for approval from other people. To live this way, you must not count on other people's approval, praise or respect, and you must not be affected by their rejection, criticism or regard. As Stoics teach, we should look for approval from within and be independent, sure of ourselves and able to take care of ourselves. The Stoics say that as long as we know we are doing the right thing, we shouldn't worry about what other people say or think about us. Others shouldn't tell us what makes us valuable, happy or successful. Those things depend on what we do, not how others respond. We shouldn't let other people manage our feelings. That's our job, not theirs. It was Marcus Aurelius who said, You have power over your mind not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. When someone insults us, they're trying to make us doubt ourselves, feel poor or not worthy. 
They want us to count on their view, want them to approve of us and feel good about ourselves, to make them happy and make us follow them. They want us to live up to their standards. So, we should give them what we want instead of what they want. Trusting ourselves is more important than doubting ourselves. We should not feel uneasy, less important, or not worthy. Instead, we should feel strong, fair, and worthy. They shouldn't make us want to be validated. We should do that for ourselves. Instead of doing what they want, we should do what we want. Epictetus once said, If you want to get better, be happy with being thought stupid and foolish. 17th lesson. Don't waste time or energy on people who insult us. This means that you shouldn't think about the past or the future too much, and you shouldn't do things that are pointless or damaging. Stoics tell us to pay attention to the moment, to what we can change, and to what is good or important. Stoics say that we should be smart about how we spend our time and energy, work toward our goals, get better, help others, and enjoy life. Stoics tell us not to waste our time and energy on things that are pointless, hurtful, or gossipy, like fights, complaints, lies, or arguments. Stoics also tell us not to waste our time and energy on people who are toxic, bad, or hurtful, like cheaters, bullies, liars, or hateful people. As Seneca said, life is long enough and a sufficiently generous amount has been given to us for the highest achievements if it were all well invested. But when it is wasted in careless luxury and spent on no good activity, we are finally forced by death to realize that it has passed away before we knew it was passing. So it is. We are not given a short life, but we make it short, and we are not ill-supplied, but wasteful of it. In the 18th lesson, we learn not to forget the people who encourage, guide, and help us. Our family, friends, teachers, leaders, heroes, or anyone else we look up to and respect can be on this list. Many Stoics say that we should always look up to people who are good examples and try to be like them in words, actions, and values. Some Stoics also say that we should look up to people from history and writing as well as people from our own time and place. Stoics often use historical figures like Socrates, Cato, Diogenes, or Cyrus to show how to be smart and good. Also, Stoics read and thought about the writings and ideas of great people like Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, and Homer. When someone insults us, they are trying to make us feel bad about ourselves. Seneca said, choose someone whose life, words, and face as reflecting the character that lies behind them, have won your approval. Always point him out to yourself, either as your guardian or as your model. There is a need for someone as a standard against which our characters can measure themselves. Without a ruler to do it against, you won't make the crooked straight. The 19th lesson is that we shouldn't put off self-improvement, which means making ourselves better in every way. This doesn't mean being sluggish, lazy, or stuck. It means being aggressive, hardworking, and always moving. The Stoics tell us that we should always try to get better, to learn new things, gain new skills, face new obstacles, and reach new goals. Stoics also say that we should get better at everything, not just one thing. The Stoics thought that the body, mind, and soul should all work together in balance. To keep their bodies fit and strong, Stoics did things like walking, running, and fighting. The Stoics kept their thoughts sharp and clear by doing things like reading, writing, and arguing. To keep their minds clean and at peace, Stoics engaged in spiritual practices like meditation, praying, and introspection. People who attack us are trying to stop us from improving ourselves, from learning new things and growing. As Epictetus said, don't explain your philosophy, live it. The twentieth lesson is to remember the big picture, the view of the whole and the universe's background, that you shouldn't be narrow-minded, short-sighted or self-centered. Instead, you should be worldly, broad-minded 
and long-sighted. The Stoics tell us to always see the bigger picture, to see things as they really are, to know what causes what, and to enjoy the beauty and order of things as they are. The Stoics also say that we should see the bigger picture for other people as well as ourselves. The Stoics thought that the universe was one and in balance and that things should be the way they are by nature and by God. Stoics knew that everything in the universe is linked and that everything depends on everything else. And the Stoics knew that everyone is bound by the same natural rules and that our lives are short. When someone insults us, they are trying to make us lose sight of the bigger picture, to see things out of scale, to make them seem more important, to make their effect bigger. As Seneca said, we are waves of the same sea, leaves of the same tree, flowers of the same garden. The 21st and last lesson is that we should never give up on happiness, which means being happy, satisfied and free. This means not being unhappy, bound or sad, but happy, thankful and free. According to the Stoics, we should always try to be happy, live in line with our nature, act in line with our reason and follow our virtue. The Stoics also say that we should look for happiness in other people as well as ourselves. The Stoics thought that being good, generous and kind were important. The Stoics wanted the best for everyone, even those who were against them. Stoics helped people who were in need, shared what they had and forgot about people who had hurt them. Stoics also valued other people's freedom and happiness and didn't get in the way of what they did or chose to do. People who insult us are trying to get us to give up on our happiness, to live against our nature, to act in a way that goes against our reason, to follow our vice. As Epictetus said, there is only one way to happiness, and that is to stop worrying about things that are beyond our will. These 20 fun Stoic lessons will make anyone who insults you feel bad about what they did and said. By using these lessons, you will not only deal with insults better, but you will also become a better person, be happier and inspire others. Your actions will also reflect the true spirit of Stoicism, which is not apathy or passivity, but an energetic and positive outlook. As Seneca said, a Stoic is someone who transforms fear into prudence, pain into transformation, mistakes into initiation, and desire into undertaking. When thinking about how complicated friendship is, one could get lost in the metaphorical wealth that compares it to a diamond. This is what a moody person said when asked why he didn't seem to have any friends. In this deep comparison, Bonds are like valuable gems, they're hard to find and surrounded by fakes that look like the parts of a well-cut rock. As the Stoics say, it's easy to see all friendships as fake after making a few bad decisions. They say that fake friendships are just copies of the real relationships that are rare and valuable. To add to this wise view, someone else adds another layer of meaning by saying that true friends are jewels that should be loved. Real relationships are where you can find the deepest value of friendship, so hold those rare bonds in high regard. But an interesting question comes up. What does it mean when a person spends a lot of time alone in a world that seems to be full of connections? If you don't have any friends, does that mean something deeper about who you are? Perhaps being alone is a way to learn more about yourself, it's a chance to explore the depths of your own personality and think about what it means to have a friend in a society that values social relations a lot. Choosing to go through life with fewer friends may be a choice that shows you value quality over number. It could mean that a person likes to be alone to grow and think. On the other hand, not having any friends could also mean that it's hard to make new ones, either because of personal fears bad situations or a lack of trust. When this happens, becoming more self-aware and being ready to leave your comfort zone may become necessary to break down the walls that keep you from making important connections. 
The question of what it means to not have any friends goes to the heart of complicated human connections and personal choices. This makes you think about the different reasons behind these situations, which leads to a deeper understanding that goes beyond simple ideas. Whether it's a choice or a result of deeper problems, not having friends can be a way to learn more about yourself. It can make you think about your values, your goals, and how complicated real links are in the vast world of human experience. Now is the time to dig into this touchy subject and look into the complicated world of friendships, or the lack of them. We will talk about how the complicated ways people interact with each other today affect our interactions. Keep in mind that not having many friends doesn't mean you're not good enough. It can be hard to find that one real gem. Follow along as we delve into the reasons why some people have trouble making these links, look into the causes, and most importantly, reveal the stern steps for real relationships. If you are shy or introverted, navigating the complicated worlds of these traits is like carving a beauty out of stone. You have to make a social world that will last. Like an artist who works hard to bring out the beauty in things, people can go on a trip that changes them and helps them make important links through the lens of Stoicism. When we start this exploration together, let's do it with open hearts and minds, ready to learn useful things, grow as people, and make real relationships. People who are shy or introverted are often seen as barriers to making friends. However, these traits can be seen as unique points of view from which to see the world. Think of these traits not as hurdles, but as unique filters that give you a more detailed view. Turning what you think are your flaws into strengths is a deep piece of Stoic philosophy wisdom. By drawing on the lessons of Marcus Aurelius, whose advice to accept what fate has bound you to, accepting your introversion, becomes an art form that recognizes who you are. Being quiet and shy is not a flaw, it's a strength that makes you unique. Recognizing that your journey may be different from the outgoing person's story does not mean that it is less important. Fully understanding yourself is the first and most important step in this process of change. Just like an artist accepts the unique qualities of the material they work with, being open about your introversion frees you from the chains of social standards and made-up situations. Marcus Aurelius said that acceptance becomes the gear that protects you in the busy world of social contact. This builds a quiet confidence that can't be shaken. Through this study of self-acceptance, one can peel back the layers of what-ifs and should-bes, coming to a deep realization that one's natural authenticity is the key to making real relationships with others. People can handle the complicated aspects of social situations with calm and resilience if they recognize and value their inner strength. Instead of trying to fit in with what other people want, the journey is about accepting the beauty of introversion and using it as a strength to build real, lasting connections. As we go on this trip together, let's write a story that celebrates the beauty of being unique, where shyness and introversion are not problems, but rather parts of how people connect with each other. Stoic wisdom tells us how to turn these traits into tools for self-discovery and freedom. This can help create a society that values differences and the quiet strength that lives inside each of us. Let us talk about the present moment now. You feel the usual pull of shyness when you're at a meeting. That's when stoicism really shines. Focus on what you can change, your deeds, your words, and your kindness, rather than what other people think or what will happen in the end. Why do you speak? Not to impress, but to get your point across. Conversations become less of a battlefield and more of a place to make real relationships when the emphasis is shifted from fear of criticism to the authenticity of your words. Trust problems. Hurt or betrayed feelings from the past can make it hard to make real bonds. When you're hurt, it's normal to want to build walls around yourself to protect yourself. 
Stoicism, on the other hand, offers a changing viewpoint that encourages people to stop focusing on past betrayals and instead focus on the here and now and the things they can control. The idea that faith grows over time is one of the most important ideas in Stoic philosophy. It takes courage to not generalize every encounter based on past betrayals while recognizing the pain of past events. Instead, philosophy encourages an open-minded examination of the present, helping people understand that not everyone will break their trust. By changing the way the story is told, people can free themselves from old grudges and be open to the chance of real bonds. Taking this conservative view means understanding that being kind is more important than being afraid of getting hurt. Being open-hearted in relationships helps make a space where trust can grow naturally. Stoicism teaches that everyone is different and brings their own experiences to the table. Giving people a chance and letting them show how sincere they are is a good way to build trust without being too limited by past experiences. Realizing that not everyone is the same is very important, and setting healthy limits is a big part of keeping yourself safe. Stoicism encourages a balance between being open and looking out for yourself. While it builds trust, it also shows how important it is to set limits that protect your mental health. This more complex method fits with the Stoic view that we can't change what other people do, but we can change how we react and how we build trust. Stoicism is basically a roadmap for getting through the tricky territory of trust problems. People are encouraged to recognize their past pain without letting it affect how they treat others in the future. Stoicism can help you build trust naturally by keeping you in mind that each person is unique and that kindness has power. By using this psychological view, people can start making important connections, living in the present with resilience and building trust in a way that fits their values and well-being. To sum up, real relationships can happen if we understand and deal with these problems. Stoicism teaches you how to accept and embrace your nature, keep your attention on what you can control, and build trust in a careful and controlled way. Using Stoic principles can help you deal with the difficulties of friendships, or the lack of them, and make real connections in a world where social interactions can be stressful. Also, remember that friendship isn't a prize to be won, but a plant to care for. If you want to make relationships, let go of the need for quick results. Believe that life is a trip, just like Seneca did. See each exchange as a step on your way, not as a test of your worth. Focusing on being your true self makes room for connections that fit with who you really are. From a stoic point of view, every person you meet is not just another friend, but a chance to learn, grow, and think. From the point of view of Stoicism, shyness and introversion go from being weaknesses to strengths. You don't have to get rid of these traits. You just have to understand them and use them to get through the complicated world of relationships. 2. Troubles with trust. Getting through the complicated maze of bonds is a lot like walking along a rough road where confidence problems are always a possibility. Like stepping on a wire, you have to carefully balance your own values with the uncertain behavior of those around you. Trust isn't something that can be given away like store samples. It has to be earned one piece at a time. Starting the process of gaining trust starts with having a deep understanding of who you are. It means going deep into your own mind to figure out what drives you and to face your fears. This knowledge of oneself is like a guide. It shows you the way in the confusing world of interactions. A compass helps a traveler find their way. Knowing yourself helps you decide when to let someone new in and when to keep the door firmly shut. Think about the strength of a tree that stands firm and doesn't move. Like a tree that knows its roots well, knowing your roots or core values can help you stay stable in the rough terrain of human relationships.
Knowing yourself becomes your anchor, a steadying force that helps you deal with the shifting waves of relationships. Like the tree that doesn't bend, it's important to be strong in your beliefs and draw strength from your roots, even when the winds of doubt are blowing. To put it simply, building trust in friendships is a delicate art that requires knowing yourself, staying true to your values, and knowing when to let others in and when to keep your guard up. By following your inner guide and staying connected to your roots, you can easily find your way through the maze of friendships, making ties that last. Know that people change, just like the seasons. Someone may seem trustworthy one day, and not the next. This isn't a message to put up walls around your heart. It's a reminder that the only thing that stays the same is change. Stay calm. If someone breaks your trust, it's not the end of the world. It's a chance to learn and get better. Being honest and knowing that ideal isn't possible, especially when it comes to people, doesn't mean you become cold and remote. Be like water. You can change and flow, but you'll always be true to who you are. Communication that is open and honest is your best tool. If questions start to show, talk about them. It's like turning on a light in a dark room. Everything becomes clearer all of a sudden. Do not be afraid to have these talks. They can help you connect with others in a deeper and more important way. Talking about something can clear up a mistake. Remember that communication goes both ways. Listen as much as you talk. This beat, a dance of words and understanding, gives friendship strength. Ultimately, it's about making friends where trust is the main thing and not just an aside. 3. Not having enough social opportunities. You might find a modest realization as you go through the maze of modern life. Not having important relationships isn't always because you don't meet people, but because you don't interact with the world around you enough. We all want real, physical relationships more than ever in a world where our phonies are constantly buzzing with alerts. Think about it this way. Volunteering in the community is more than just helping other people out of kindness. It can change you and help you meet people who are like you. Picture yourself doing things that you enjoy, like planting trees or organizing books at the library. Every job you do with others becomes a thread that weaves you more and more into the rich fabric of social connections. The stoic virtues shown in these activities help everyone, and along the way, you meet people who are also on the same road. Also, let's not forget how powerful shared information and interests can be. Imagine entering a place where everyone speaks perfectly in the language of your job or hobby. Workshops and workshops that are specific to your hobbies aren't just ways to improve your resume. They're also great places to make friends. Having talks is easy in these public areas because you're surrounded by people who understand the subtleties of your work or share your love for it. Discovering your group is a lot like that. It's where work growth and personal ties come together naturally. Basically, looking for important ties means being involved in the world, whether that's by doing community work or spending time in places where people share your hobbies. Adopting these methods not only helps the world as a whole, but it also builds real connections that go beyond the surface level of modern communication, fostering a deep sense of community in the complex fabric of life. Don't forget to use the outdoors as a social stage too. Activities like climbing, biking and group yoga aren't just good for your body. They also help people connect with each other. When people are in nature, they can have talks that grow like plants. These activities get rid of the formalities that come with most social situations, which lets real relationships form. Show appreciation for the world around you and the people who are with you at this time. Having a lot of friends isn't important. What matters is cherishing the ones that make your life more interesting. Taking this simple and honest method makes the search for bonds a rewarding journey. 4. Not possessing the ability to interact with others. Creating lasting bonds takes work and thought. 
which are things that we often forget about in the busyness of our lives. Overcoming the problem of not having enough social skills is very important for this project. A soft lesson to take advantage of social chances, no matter how small they may seem, is provided by the wisdom of Marcus Elas, who gently pushed us to accept the people fate brings into our lives. Starting the process of making new friends means taking small, doable steps. Start a chat at a nearby coffee shop, join a club in your area, or join online groups that are related to your hobbies. Like how plants need water and sunshine to grow, these small interactions are the building blocks that help people feel more confident in different social situations. Developing social skills also takes time and care. Mastering the skill of listening with purpose and understanding is an important part of improving your social skills. In a world where everyone wants to be heard, being the person who really listens makes you stand out. Create questions, not just as a way to answer, but as a real way to try to understand other people. Listen to what people around you have to say with genuine interest. When you stop thinking about how other people see you and start really understanding their stories, you can make stronger relationships with them. Creating a place where people feel valuable and truly heard is more important than impressing others with your wit or stories. Furthermore, expanding your social group by trying out different kinds of activities can greatly assist in growing your list of possible friends. To meet people with different hobbies and types, go to classes, cultural events, or neighborhood meetings. By involving yourself in a variety of social activities, you not only improve your social skills, but also raise your chances of meeting people who share your interests and ideals, who share your mind. To summarize, making friends requires a deliberate and patient approach, along with a dedication to improving social skills, taking advantage of social situations, listening with understanding, and doing a range of activities. All of these are important parts of this trip that will help you make real bonds with other people. Embrace the ups and downs of social relations with a calm attitude as well. It's okay that not every talk will turn into a bond that lasts a lifetime. Every encounter, even if it doesn't turn into a friendship, is a step forward in your social journey. Changing goals or being turned down for growth is a normal part of human contact, not a sign of how valuable you are. You learn how to handle the intricate web of human connections with ease and resilience with each new experience, in addition to improving your social skills. Remember that the strength of your relationships with people is more important than the number of friends you have. As our lives change, the sad story of the boy and the apple tree can help us understand how important it is to have close friends. This old story is a powerful metaphor for how our goals change over time and how that can cause us to lose touch with links that were once very important to us. When we were kids, our friendships were like playing with the tree. They were clean and free of the worries of adulthood. As we get older though, our attention tends to turn to what we think are more important, like getting a home, being financially stable, and maintaining our social standing. Most people's goals change over time. It's a normal part of growing up and changing. But as we try to meet what we think are our needs, we might forget about the friendships that used to give us comfort and support, like how an apple tree provides shade. Due dates and expectations change the way relationships work when they become important in our lives. It is very important to understand that this changing of goals is a normal part of being human. There is a small risk, though, in focusing on our supposed needs. It can make us forget about the important ties we already have. Just like the boy who only went back to the tree when he needed something, we might only talk to our friends when we're having a hard time or need help and forget about the constant, no complaining company they offer. In the constant chase of success and security, it's easy to forget about the friends who are there for you and give support and courage. Because of this mistake, 
there is a hole in the world that is full of achievements but missing in real, emotional relationships. Not only does reaching personal goals bring true happiness, but so does caring for and cherishing the friendships that have brought you comfort and joy along the way. So, as we get older and deal with the challenges of being an adult, it's important to find a balance between pursuing our own goals and making links that matter. Appreciating the long-lasting bonds that have been there for us through life's ups and downs makes our lives better and gives us a deep sense of satisfaction that goes beyond personal accomplishments. Keeping or rebuilding ties takes work, a lot like taking care of a yard. Small acts of kindness and standing up for others over time are more important than big actions. Start by reaching out, starting talks, and being there for them in both good and bad times. Don't forget that bonds, like trees, take time to grow strong roots. We can learn from the story of the boy in the tree that friendship is a two-way street that needs care and attention from both sides. Don't be the boy who only thought about the tree when he needed to. Be the person who regularly values and cares for these connections. Like the complex fabric of our lives, which is always changing as we handle jobs, school and personal growth, moving goals or growth is a key part of creating and molding the structure of our bonds. Stoicism stands out as a source of timeless wisdom in this lively dance. Its teachings are just as useful today as they were in ancient times, helping us accept that life is always changing. Imagine that your life is a twisting river that is always moving and changing its direction as you go through the rough waves of job growth and the calm waters of family life. In this trip, your ability to connect with others naturally rises and falls as you go through different stages of life. You should know that this ups and downs doesn't mean you're a failure, but rather that you're living your life to the best. Stoicism is known for its useful philosophy, which helps people find their way through the complicated web of modern life. Many people want to have a large group of friends, but life is so busy these days with meetings right after each other, looming deadlines and family duties that it can be hard to decide. But Stoicism says that people should consciously think about this urge again and tells them to value quality over number when it comes to friendships. Stoicism suggests focusing on building a small group of deep and important relationships instead of spreading your energy across many contacts. This careful use of mental and time resources is not meant to leave anyone out. It's an investment in the areas that count the most. When you take this conservative view, you not only value your own time, but also the time of others. This deliberate focus on a small group of relationships makes it possible to build ties that go beyond the surface and turn into real sources of support and happiness. Stoicism teaches us to carefully choose the people we hang out with, understanding that the quality of the relationship is much more important than the quantity of friends. Individuals can cultivate a sense of authenticity in their relationships by taking this stoic approach, which honors the dynamic flow of life. So, long-lasting ties are made that can stand up to the tests of time and situation. In a world that is often busy, stoicism gives us an unchanging way to build relationships that make our lives better and give us a sense of lasting connection and satisfaction. Dealing with life's shifting goals with Stoicism doesn't mean giving up on having friends. It's more about knowing and going with the flow of interactions. Because of your new goals, some people may move away, but others will stay or even come into your life. Bring wisdom and courage with you on this trip. Remember that every person you meet, for however long they stay, adds something special to your life. Focus on the present moment when you're with other people and let Stoicism help you make friends who understand who you are becoming. Life is full of busyness that can push our mental health to the edges. Because of this, it's becoming more and more important to recognize and understand the silent but important role it plays in making valuable bonds. 
Stoicism is an old philosophy that lives on in modern times. It speaks to our resilience and sheds light on this important part of human connection. It's more than just the idea of keeping a calm attitude. It encourages us to explore the complex landscapes of our minds and emotions as we go through the rough terrain of life. It can be like stumbling through a maze of social problems when our inner world is clouded by worry or sadness. In these times, the Stoics' lessons are like a torch, not one that will completely light out the darkness, but one that will show us the way through it. This allegory of light becomes our guide, helping us see things more clearly when we're having mental problems and, in the process, helping us learn more about ourselves. Stoicism acts as a lighthouse, guiding us with renewed resilience through the ups and downs of our inner battles. This increased self-awareness then makes it easier for us to connect with others in a real way. By adopting the wisdom of Stoicism, people learn how to deal with and take care of their mental health, which helps them be more present and centered in social situations. Stoicism changes not only how we think about ourselves, but also how we interact with the world and the people around us. It supports a well-rounded approach that takes into account how our mental health and the quality of our interactions are complicatedly connected. Stoicism says that the search for important relationships is both a way to grow as a person and a way for everyone to learn more about what it means to be human. Well-known comic George Carlin said that people who seem negative often have a frustrated optimist inside them. This feeling shows how important it is to recognize that our inner problems, if not dealt with, can build walls instead of bridges between us and possible friends. Being overly positive, like wearing rose-colored glasses, isn't the point. The point is to realize how much our mental fights can affect our ability to make and keep relationships. Finding out more about the complicated dance between mental health and the nature of friendships shows a complex interaction that affects the quality of our relationships. Our personal battles, whether they are based on things that happened in the past or are still happening, can affect how we deal with each other. Bringing these problems to the surface and being honest about them not only shows that we are vulnerable, but it also opens the door for mutual understanding. Admitting that we have mental health problems is the first step toward removing the hurdles they may have built up. Making a real relationship takes courage and makes room for them to grow. We let others into our inner world when we share our weaknesses, which makes room for understanding, kindness and real support. When we realize how much our mental health affects our bonds, the path to better mental health becomes a shared experience. When dealing with complicated feelings, friends can help and provide support that goes beyond the surface level of social relations. Along this trip together, we improve our ties by knowing and accepting each other. As a community, we work to improve mental health. The strings of kindness, support and resilience run through our lives. One of the most important things about this common experience is that it can build real relationships, going beyond the superficial exchanges that usually happen in casual friendships. We not only improve our own lives by accepting our own problems and encouraging open conversation, but we also help build a community where authenticity and understanding are the building blocks of long-lasting relationships. Let's do something useful now. Stoicism is not about drinking a latte and imitating Marcus Aurelius. Actionable steps are what it's about. To begin, be aware. No, it's not a fancy word for thinking. In a world where attention is valuable, it's about being present. When you're fully present in a talk, it's like giving a unique gift. It shows that you care, which is valuable in friendship. Also, meditation isn't just for monks. It's for everyone who has a lot going on in their lives. Taking 10 minutes a day is good for more than just your brain. It shows others that you value calm and focus. Setting peace as a goal may seem like a luxury in our 24-7 world, 
but it's the foundation for strong friendships. Finding peace in the middle of chaos is often what tranquility means. It's about having a rock to hold on to when life storms happen, which they will. Friends are not only for nice days, they are also safe places to be when it rains. Seeking inner peace makes you someone others want to talk to. Stoicism tells us that we can find inner peace by thinking about ourselves and being consistent. It has to do with being aware of our feelings, knowing them, and not letting them control what we do. Being emotionally stable doesn't mean not having any feelings. It means being in charge of how we respond to our feelings. You will be a light of security in a world that is often full of uncertainty once you master this. People naturally want to be around people who are calm and understanding. By working on your inner peace, you unintentionally make room for friendships to grow. Keep in mind that when you work on your mental health, you're not only taking care of your mind, you're also planting the seeds for stronger, more important relationships, styles of living. The fast pace of life can make you feel alone and make friends less important. Imagine that you're rushing to meet goals and cross things off your list, but when the day is over, the chair across from you at the dinner table is still empty. Not being busy is important. What you value is more important. Stoicism advises us to think carefully about the choices we make. Are you spending your time on things that really matter? It can change things to think about this. Finding the courage to turn down things that take up your time but don't help you connect with others is the key. With all the chaos in modern life, the idea of shaping your day is like an artist making a sculpture. Each choice is like a knife stroke, carefully cutting out time for relationships and duties. You don't just have to stretch your day to fit everything in. You have to shape it wisely, keeping your goals in mind. Think about the power of making choices on purpose. Even if you don't have as much time to hang out with friends, the ones you do have can be much more enjoyable if you choose people who share your values and make your life better. If you follow the Stoic philosophy, you must realize that every encounter has the potential to be deep and meaningful. This is about creating a social world where relationships go deeper and where the quality of experiences is more important than the number of them. Keep in mind the art of balance for Stoics, not just splitting your time evenly between different parts of your life, but also making sure that each part of your life is in line with what truly makes you happy. Understanding that happiness doesn't always come from having a full plan, but rather from using your time and energy in a meaningful and measured way is the key to wisdom. With this method, you can enjoy the subtle beauty of every moment, whether you're working on your personal growth, your career, or building relationships that matter. Imagine that you are the creator of your own life as you go through the complexities of daily life. You cut away the extra with each choice you make, showing the beauty that is your healthy and meaningful life. There needs to be space for what really counts, and a balance between tasks and the basic human need to connect with others and feel fulfilled. Imagine that your life is like a collage, with each piece reflecting a different part of it. The pieces could be work, hobbies, rest, or friends. Each has a place, and your job is to put these tiles in a way that makes a pattern that flows well. It's like balance, and you have to keep thinking and changing things. But if you get it right, your life's picture is not only beautiful, it's also very rewarding. Not sharing the same hobbies. Interests that are different from each other can be like singing notes that are all different, but still part of a bigger tune. When people's interests meet, it's not just a note that's missed. It's a whole orchestra of links that could have been played. Consider this. You like rock music, while your co-worker likes classical music. Yes, there is a gap, but there is also a bridge ready to be crossed. Stoicism encourages us to see these differences not as problems, but as ways to see more of the world. Find the melody in the chaos, it says. Continuing with the idea that different hobbies are like musical notes, 
Think about the complex arrangement that happens when different emotions mix. As a symphony uses a variety of instruments and tones, so does the symphony of human ties when each person brings their own unique hobbies to the table. Conflicts of interest should not be seen as problems, but as chances to build more complex relationships. This way of thinking pushes us to examine and value the variety around us. If we only think about our own hobbies, we might create a bubble that keeps us from seeing other things and making new friends. When we're open to the different interests of those around us, we don't just find new hobbies. We also find new ways to connect with people and see things. Think of life as a big fabric, with each thread reflecting a different hobby or interest. When we focus on a small area, we accidentally limit the range of colors and patterns in our fabric. Stoicism gives us the courage to step outside of our comfort zones and open ourselves to a wider range of events. We can have a fuller and more interesting life by actively seeking out and participating in a wide range of hobbies. Someone once said, variety is the spice of life. Stoicism supports this interest by telling us that each person we meet has a vast array of thoughts, feelings, and experiences. The saying, variety is the spice of life, has a greater meaning when you talk about Stoicism. It becomes a driving principle that tells us to be open and curious about life. Every person we meet is a new part in the story of human life, full of new experiences, ideas and interests that are just waiting to be found. Stoicism encourages us to value the variety that makes our lives more interesting and rewarding. The more different people we meet, the more complex and rich our trip becomes. Let's say you're a super fan of video games and your friend likes gardening. Ask them what their favorite plant is instead of just smiling and leaving. Take an interest in what they do. It's not about acting like you love gardening. It's about valuing their interest and letting them see and value yours. People with different hobbies are drawn together by their shared interest in learning new things. We all have the same kinds of excitement, determination and joy that drive us to pursue our hobbies and interests. Stoicism acts as a guide, directing us to look for shared values, human feelings and common ground rather than just shared interests. Picture a world where friends don't just like the same things, but also value and understand each other's differences. A sports fanatic and a reader can both relate to this world because they both work hard and love to learn. Socrates tells us to lead with an open mind and an open heart, making links that aren't just about what we do, but also about who we are and what we can become together. Remember that how much we value our friendships is not how much we have in common, but how we accept and grow from our differences. Stoicism is not about hiding your emotions. It's about being aware of them and controlling them. Don't be afraid to look for bonds that touch your heart. Thanks for listening. If you thought it was helpful, please give us a thumbs up. This will help us reach more people who are looking for old wisdom. Join us on a trip that will change your life as we explore the deep lessons of Stoicism and find out how to be happy and live a full life. As we look into this topic, we learn about achieving happiness, 12 Stoic methods. Each technique can help you find lasting happiness. Stoicism, which comes from old wisdom, is a timeless way to deal with the problems of modern life. These 12 methods are not just rules, they are calls to develop virtues, practice awareness, and adopt a way of thinking that is not affected by changes in the outside world. Step 1. Accepting the power of it. When it comes to Stoic philosophy, there is one main lesson that stands out. Acceptance is powerful. Stoicism gives us the courage to accept and admit that not everything is under our control. The cultivation of inner peace and resilience begins with this wisdom. Acceptance is not idle defeat. 
it is a choice to face the dichotomy between what we can change and what we cannot. By putting our attention on the parts of life we can change, we free ourselves from worry and anxiety that aren't necessary. This stoic concept tells us to stop trying to change the outside world because it's pointless and instead work on changing how we react and think. According to the Stoics, real strength comes from being able to handle life's ups and downs with ease. When we face problems, being aware of the things we can't change helps us keep a clear head and keep our goals in mind. It helps us get through rough seas without giving in to the strong feelings that often come with sudden events. Accepting something is not a one-time choice, it's something you do all the time. Stoicism gives us the courage to keep reminding ourselves of the difference between the things we can change and the things we can't. This ongoing statement helps us maintain a calm state of mind, saving us from the never-ending quest to control every part of our lives. Accepting what is gives you the freedom to live in the present moment in an honest way. It tells us to let go of social pressures and demands that aren't reasonable. By recognizing and accepting the way things are, we can live a more peaceful and satisfying life. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus said, We cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. This ancient wisdom sums up what it means to master your happiness by accepting what you can't change. 2. Show thanks every day. Stoic ideas say that one of the most important things you can do to live a happy life is to practice thanks every day. Stoicism teaches us to enjoy the present and find happiness in the little things in life, which helps us develop a positive mind that transcends our surroundings. When looked at through the lens of Stoicism, gratitude is more than just a passing feeling. It is a choice to see and accept the wealth that surrounds us. By starting each day with a practice of reflecting on what we're thankful for, we shift our attention from what we might be missing to all the good things in our lives. The Stoics say that we should deeply appreciate the everyday things that happen in our lives and try to find joy in them. Finding beauty in the seemingly ordinary parts of our lives, like the feel of the sun on our skin or the company of loved ones, is possible when we practice thanks. Practicing thanks every day is a strong way to fight the widespread feelings of dissatisfaction that society often promotes. For us, it gives us a strong base that lets us face problems with a mindset of gratitude instead of complaining. Focusing on thanks on purpose gives us the strength to keep a positive attitude even when bad things happen. Stoics stress thanks for more than just their own health and happiness. They believe that being grateful makes you aware of how everything is linked, which makes you feel responsible and kind toward others. We improve our relationships and make our towns better places to live by recognizing the efforts of those around us. Being grateful every day is a life-changing practice that fits perfectly with Stoic ideas. By encouraging us to focus on what we do have instead of what we don't have, it helps us develop an attitude of wealth and happiness. According to the Stoic philosopher Seneca, true happiness is to enjoy the present without worrying about the future. Being grateful is the key to unlocking the deep joy that is hidden in every moment which is the way to mastering happiness. Building inner resilience is the third step. The idea of building inner resilience stands out as an important thread running through the fabric of a full life in the Stoic wisdom weave. Stoicism teaches us not only how to deal with difficulties, but also how to turn them into a source of strength and development. According to the Stoic tradition, Inner resilience means developing a strong and adaptable mind that can handle life's difficult situations. It means being able to deal with losses with ease, stay calm in tough situations, and come out of them better than before. Adversity is a natural part of being human, according to the Stoics. Instead of seeing difficulties as impossible problems, 
that can't be solved. They see them as chances to work on and strengthen their inner resilience. From this point of view, we can handle the oops and downs of life with a calm that goes beyond the outside conditions. Accepting pain and uncertainty as necessary parts of personal growth is part of the stoic approach to inner resilience. When we see problems as chances to show virtue and wisdom, we not only deal with them, but also learn from them. Developing inner resilience is important for more than just your own good. People who are strong become sources of strength for others, creating a positive and supportive chain reaction in communities. Building inner resilience is not a one-time thing, but a process that goes on over time. Stoicism teaches us to see every failure as a chance to improve our character, strengthen our resolve, and learn more about ourselves. This quote from the Stoic philosopher Epictetus says it all. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This is exactly what it means to develop inner resilience, a firm resolve to face life's challenges with calmness, strength, and the unwavering goal of not only surviving, but also growing stronger through the fire of experience. The big picture of life shows that developing inner resilience is a powerful example of how Stoic philosophy can change your life and help you master happiness. The fourth is living in harmony with nature. Inside the framework of Stoic philosophy, a deep lesson is taught we must live in harmony with nature. Stoics teach that if we match our lives with the basic rules of nature, we will live a more healthy and peaceful life. They get their ideas from the way everything in nature works together. If you look at things through Stoic eyes, living in harmony with nature means identifying and accepting the order and balance that are built into the world. It encourages us to match our actions, thoughts and wants with the natural world's timeless patterns. This makes us feel like we are one with the universe. Stoicism tells us to pay attention to the cycles of nature, like the seasons, the sun's rise and set, and the flow of rivers, to learn about how temporary life is. Because everything changes, we are encouraged to enjoy the present and not get too attached to things that are temporary. To live in peace with nature, we also need to understand our place in the bigger picture of life. Stoicism encourages us to be humble and see how we are connected to everything around us. We are tied to everything, including each other and the world. This makes us more responsible and environmentally friendly in how we live. Additionally, Stoic philosophy pushes us to develop a mindset that resembles the resilience seen in nature. Stoicism teaches adaptability and resilience in the face of life's natural challenges, much like how a tree bends in the wind and then straightens back up again. Nature-based living is not a call to hide away from society. It's an offer to live in a real and moral way. It tells us to follow values like prudence, justice, wisdom, courage, and temperance, which are built into the natural order. Five. Learning to be aware in the present. Stoic lessons are very detailed and practicing being aware in the present moment stands out as a bright thread that leads to a greater sense of peace and happiness. Stoicism, which stresses living in harmony with nature, encourages us to be fully present in the present moment without being distracted by regrets from the past or worries about the future. Stoics teach that mindfulness means consciously and fully focusing on the present moment without any fears or other thoughts that aren't necessary. It takes work to be fully present in every moment and see the beauty and importance of what is happening right now. Stoicism teaches that focusing on the present moment can help us free our minds from worries and regrets about the past and the future. Stoics say that we can't change the past and that we can't be sure about the future. This means that the present is where we paint the picture of our lives. Stoicism is the practice of paying attention to our thoughts and feelings without judging them in order to develop present-focused courage. 
we can better handle outside situations with more clarity and calmness when we build a non-reactive awareness. This helps us understand our inner world better. In Stoicism, mindfulness is more than just being aware of yourself. It also means appreciating how complicated the world is around us. We can make the most of our lives by noticing the little things around us, using all of our senses and appreciating the beauty in the everyday. The Stoic philosophy also tells us that time is a limited resource that cannot be recovered once it has been spent. Being aware of the present moment is a way to show respect for this valuable resource by savoring every moment. You have to choose to live fully and honestly without carrying around extra mental baggage. Sixth, using virtue in everyday life. The call to uphold virtue in our daily deeds is a central tenet of the philosophy school of Stoicism. Stoicism provides a deep roadmap for not only living, but living virtuously, with its focus on developing wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice. Stoics believe that virtue is not a high ideal, but a useful goal that can be reached. It means carefully making sure that our actions are in line with the timeless values of moral greatness, honesty, and goodness. Because we are committed to virtue, our choices and actions lead us to a life with meaning and satisfaction. Stoics believed that the first virtue is wisdom, which means being able to figure out what is really important and useful in life. By using wisdom, we can make decisions that are in line with our real selves and benefit other people by navigating the difficulties of life with clarity and understanding. The second virtue is courage, which is not the lack of fear, but the strength to face problems and obstacles with strength. Stoicism says that we can create resilience and inner strength by facing our fears and problems head on. This leads to personal growth and self-mastery. Justice, the third virtue, is more than just following the law. It also includes being fair, kind, and caring about other people. Stoicism teaches us to treat others with respect and compassion, realizing that all people are linked and working to create peaceful societies. The fourth virtue is temperance, which means being moderate and controlling yourself. Stoicism teaches that we can avoid excess and live a calm and peaceful life by controlling our wants and urges. Everyday virtue-based acts are not a one-time thing, they are a pledge to improve and strengthen our character with every choice we make. According to Stoic philosophy, real happiness doesn't come from outside factors, but from choosing to live a good life. 7. Getting a sense of separation. A deep lesson can be learned from Stoic philosophy, how to develop a sense of separation. Stoicism teaches us that we can free ourselves from worry and find peace in life's uncertainties by letting go of our attachment to what other people think or do. In the Stoic tradition, detachment doesn't mean apathy or disinterest. Instead, it means choosing to let go of our connection to things that are out of our control. This practice frees us from the emotional upheaval that often comes with outside events, so we can handle the ups and downs of life with ease and grace. Stoicism says that we can only change how we feel inside, but not how things are outside. By recognizing this difference, we stop trying to control things that we can't change and instead focus on changing how we react and feel. We get back control over our inner world when we do this. Stoicism says that detachment means keeping an emotional balance that doesn't change when life changes in unpredictable ways. This balance lets us deal with both happiness and sadness with a calm mind, without the strong emotions that can make it hard to make decisions and disturb our inner peace. Developing a sense of distance also helps us see how temporary things happening in the outside world are. Stoicism gives us the courage to look at both success and failure, gain and loss, with an even mind. By accepting that things change over time, we stop letting the temporary nature of outside situations affect us too much. 
8th, taking big risks and facing fears head on. In the stern patchwork of life, there is one important thread that runs through it all, facing fears and problems head on. Stoicism teaches that true strength comes from facing life's natural challenges head on, not avoiding or evading them. Taking a thoughtful and focused approach to problems is needed to face fears and challenges head on. Stoicism teaches us to see problems not as impassable hurdles, but as chances to build inner strength, courage and resilience. The Stoics say that our fears are often caused by how we think and feel about things, not by the things themselves. There is less power in fear when we look at and question these ideas. This gives us the courage to face problems with a calm and clear mind. In addition, the Stoic philosophy encourages people to seek out difficulties. Stoicism tells us to not wait for problems to happen, but to actively seek them out as a way to improve our skills, see how strong we are, and make our character stronger. A measured and thoughtful method is taken when facing fears and challenges head on. Stoicism tells us to look at things logically, come up with a plan, and then carry it out with courage and determination. By doing this, we demonstrate resilience and calm as we manage the rough seas of life. The stoic idea of facing problems head-on affects more than just one person's health. It also affects society as a whole. A culture of resilience and creativity is fostered by having a mindset that views difficulties as chances for everyone to learn and grow. 9. Making relationships that matter. In the patchwork of stoic lessons, the need to make important relationships shines like a beacon on the road to a happy life. Stoicism, which stresses virtue and how all people are linked, makes it clear how important it is to build real connections that make our lives better and improve the lives of others. Realizing that people are naturally social is the first step in making lasting relationships. Stoicism urges us to see relationships as chances to connect on a deeper level, sharing experiences, wisdom and support, rather than just as business dealings. In our encounters with others, Stoicism instructs us to develop traits like kindness, understanding and giving. By acting with these ideals, we help make the world a better place for everyone, which strengthens the ties that bind us to our communities. Stoicism also encourages intentional and thoughtful connections rather than chasing shallow relationships based on short-term joys or approval from others. Stoicism tells us to look for relationships based on shared values, respect and a real understanding of the strengths and flaws of others. Stoic philosophy also says that to make real relationships with other people you have to accept their happiness and sadness. During celebrations, our bonds grow stronger as we share in the joy of those around us. It strengthens our ties when we help and understand those who are going through hard times. Also, Stoicism encourages us to care about more than just our close friends and family. It asks us to care about all people. We can help make the world a more caring and linked place by seeing that everyone has the same problems and hopes. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher said, one of the most beautiful qualities of true friendship is to understand and to be understood. This sums up what it means to make real connections. Two people getting each other, helping each other, and knowing they are human. 10. The art of staying calm in good times and bad. Within the Stoic framework, there is a deep lesson that has been passed down through the years. The development of equilibrium, or keeping your mind steady in good times and bad. Stoicism tells us that real happiness doesn't depend on what's going on around us, but on how well we can handle the ups and downs of life. According to the Stoic school, equanimity means keeping your mind calm and steady, no matter what happens in the outside world. The Stoic person stays rooted in an inner calm, 
free from the stormy waves of excessive joy or sorrow, whether they are surrounded by success or confronted with difficulties. Stoicism says that when things are going well, you shouldn't give in to the temptations of excess or the false idea that things will stay the same. Instead, it gives us the courage to enjoy success without becoming overly attached, knowing that things outside of us are temporary. We can escape the problems of vanity and privilege by developing an attitude that goes beyond the draw of plenty. On the other hand, Stoicism builds a strong base for resilience when bad things happen. The Stoic doesn't give in to hopelessness or anger. Instead, they keep a clear and logical mind and see problems as chances to learn and grow. Being calm and accepting that problems are a normal part of life can protect you from the negative effects of problems. According to Stoicism, the power to stay calm comes from being able to control how we respond to things that happen around us. We can handle the ups and downs of life with a calm and collected spirit if we pay attention to how we feel inside. This strong concept of Stoicism applies to society as a whole, not just to one person. Stoicism promotes a state of calmness that goes beyond the highs and lows of society, creating a strong group that faces problems together and with strength. 11. Reflecting on yourself. When you study Stoicism, the art of self-reflection, which is a practice that changes you, takes center stage. Stoicism urges us to look inward and think deeply about our thoughts, actions and beliefs on a regular basis. This isn't just idle thinking about yourself, it's a purposeful effort to become more self-aware, which is important for personal growth and living a full life. In the Stoic tradition, self-reflection means looking at our views, actions and reactions to the things that happen in our lives on purpose. By taking the time to think about ourselves, we can learn more about what drives us, find ways to improve, and grow in our understanding of who we really are. Stoics thought that a life that isn't thought through isn't worth living. Self-reflection helps us face our biases, question our assumptions, and improve the way we see things. A feeling of sincerity and authenticity is fostered by this ongoing process of questioning which allows us to match our actions with our core ideals. Self-reflection is also a part of Stoicism and can help you become more emotionally intelligent. By looking at how we feel in different situations, we learn how to handle our emotions with wisdom and clear thinking. This deeper understanding of ourselves helps us deal with problems calmly and enjoy happy times with thanks. Self-reflection also helps you develop virtue, which is one of the main ideas behind Stoicism. By looking at our actions through the lens of values like temperance, courage, wisdom and justice, we make a plan for how to live an ethical life. This mindful agreement with good beliefs helps us make choices and act in the right way. 12. Making your life fit with your goals. Stoic lessons are very deep, but they have one main idea that comes out. You should live your life according to your ideals. Stoicism encourages us to find, accept, and live by our core values. This way of life is not only true to ourselves, but also in line with the timeless ideals that this ancient philosophy promotes. To start living according to your values, you need to think about what your core views and ideals are. Stoicism supports reflection to find out what's important to you, illuminating the traits that speak to your deepest self, whether it's wisdom, courage, justice, or temperance. Once these ideals are known, the Stoic philosophy makes you promise to live by them every day. It's not enough to just say what you believe, you have to live by it in the decisions you make, the relationships you build, and the way you move through the world. This conscious alignment turns into a guide that helps you see clearly and with purpose through the complicated parts of life. Stoicism says that if you want to live by your beliefs, you have to be devoted to virtue all the time. 
When used in this context, virtue means being morally good and showing traits that are good for your character and the well-being of others. When you make decisions based on virtue, your life shows not only who you are, but also who you want to be. Stoicism also requires courage to uphold your ideals in the face of external pressures or social standards. This gives you a sense of inner independence, which lets you resist outside influences and live your life according to beliefs that will last. Living in line with your ideals is not a one-time thing. It's a journey that you're always on. Stoicism acknowledges that character changes over time and pushes you to keep thinking about yourself to make sure that your actions are in line with how you're understanding virtue as it changes. Do you ever feel overloaded, emotionally worn out, or stuck in bad relationships or situations? There are other people like you. It's all too easy to get stuck in habits that make us feel tired and unfulfilled in today's fast-paced and connected world. If I told you that leaving these bad situations could be your greatest strength, would you believe me? Imagine that you are in a situation that makes you feel tense, anxious, or unappreciated all the time. That could be a bad friendship, a stifling place of work, or a relationship that has gone bad. The constant bad mood, the feeling of being ripped off, and the uneasy feeling that something is wrong are all signs. Even though these are red flags, it can seem impossible to walk away. We all know that change and the unknown can be scary. But here's the thing. Leaving bad situations isn't a sign of weakness. It shows your strength and resilience. It has to do with knowing how valuable you are, setting limits, and putting your health first. And do you know what? This lesson comes from the deep wisdom of Stoicism, which was pushed by the philosopher Marcus Aurelius. Here, we'll look at 12 powerful lessons from Stoicism and Marcus Aurelius that show how leaving toxic relationships can change your life. These lessons provide a roadmap for reclaiming your power and living a life of authenticity and fulfillment, from setting boundaries and conserving energy to embracing growth and mastering your inner world. Lesson 1. Don't put your energy into everything. Imagine having a lot of responsibilities, demands and tasks to do, and feeling like you're always running out of energy. It seems like every email, alert and request is like an extra weight that you have to carry. Sound like you? In our busy world, many of us can relate to this situation. Here's the thing though. Marcus Aurelius shows us that not everything is worth our time. The Stoic philosophy of Marcus Aurelius teaches us that we need to be smart about where we put our precious energy. We wouldn't wait a weeds in the garden, and we shouldn't waste our energy on things that don't help us grow or stay healthy. How can we use this wisdom in our daily lives then? First, we need to be aware of where our energy is going. Are we putting too much into relationships or situations that drain our minds, hearts or spirits? Do we have to give up our peace of mind for things we can't change? Marcus Aurelius reminds us that energy is a valuable resource that should be kept for important things. We get back our power to leave bad relationships and situations when we learn when to take a step back and save our energy. Not avoiding or not caring about it, it's about putting our health and inner peace first above all else. Remember Marcus Aurelius's timeless wisdom, not everything needs your energy, the next time you feel stressed or exhausted. Pick wisely where to put your money and watch as you regain the power to leave toxic relationships and start living a life full of clarity, purpose and inner peace. Lesson 2. Being firm about limits isn't selfish. Have you ever felt like people were always testing or breaking your rules, like you're trying too hard to please everyone and putting your own health last? A lot of us have to deal with it every day. But Marcus Aurelius said that setting limits isn't selfish. It's necessary to keep our sanity and honor. According to the Stoic philosophy, 
Setting limits is a way to protect our morality and inner peace. Set limits to keep harmful influences at bay and keep your sense of self-respect, just like a fortress keeps its people safe from outside threats. How then do we set limits in our lives? Self-awareness is the first step. Knowing our own needs, values and limits is important. From there, it's important to set clear boundaries and stick to them without feeling guilty or apologizing. We can learn from Marcus Aurelius that setting limits isn't about being mean or shutting people out. It's about taking care of ourselves and our health. In this way, we build self-respect and make room for real connections based on respect and understanding for each other. So the next time you feel overwhelmed or used, remember the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius. Setting limits isn't selfish. It's an act of self-care and honesty. Reclaim your ability to leave toxic relationships with grace and confidence by accepting your right to peace of mind and well-being. Lesson 3. Closure doesn't always come from the outside. On this journey, we often look for approval or answers from outside sources. But Marcus Aurelius said that closure doesn't always come from outside sources. It often comes from within. The Stoic philosophy sees closure not as a place to get approval or peace from others, but as a way of accepting things as they are and finding inner peace. Marcus Aurelius teaches us that the only way to truly end something is to accept that it will end and be happy in the present moment. How then do we come to terms with ourselves? It starts with following the stoic principles of acceptance and mindfulness, which means recognizing our feelings without letting them control us and being thankful for the lessons we've learned from our mistakes. Marcus Aurelius reminds us that finding closure doesn't mean ignoring the past or denying our feelings. Rather, it means fully accepting them and incorporating them into our journey of personal development. Remember Marcus Aurelius's timeless wisdom. True closure comes from within the next time you find yourself longing for resolution. Enjoy the present, be okay with life's unknowns, and find comfort in the journey itself. It's often easier to grow when you're not in your comfort zone. As we try to leave toxic relationships, we often have moments of doubt when the familiar voices of comfort tell us to stay. But Marcus Aurelius reminds us that real growth is waiting for us outside of our comfort zones. Toxic people and situations can make us feel safe when we're not, keeping us stuck in a cycle of familiarity even as they hurt our health. But in order to grow, we have to face the things that make us uncomfortable and ride out the rough waters of change. Moving out of our comfort zone takes courage, a willingness to accept the unknown, and faith in our ability to handle the rough waters of change. This is about realizing that growth often happens in uncomfortable situations, in the tests that force us to change and go beyond our limits. Marcus Aurelius shows us that the journey to growth may be hard, but the rewards are huge. We take back our power and make a way for a better, more fulfilling future when we leave toxic situations and enter the unknown. The wisdom of Marcus Aurelius should be remembered the next time you find yourself at a crossroads between comfort and growth. Growth often happens outside of your comfort zone. Accept the difficulty and the pain, and you will become stronger, smarter, and more resilient than ever. Fiveth lesson, you can't change other people. Marcus Aurelius said something very important. You can't change other people. In the world of toxic situations, this lesson is very important because it tells us not to waste time trying to control or change the people around us. According to Stoic philosophy, we can change the way we think and act, but we can't change the way other people think or act. If you try to change someone, it's like trying to tame the wind or control the tides. You'll only end up frustrated and disappointed. Keeping this in mind, how do we handle toxic situations? 
Marcus Aurelius suggests a simple but profound way to solve the problem. We should focus on what we can control, which are our own responses and reactions. When we stop trying to change other people, which doesn't work, we can focus on building inner peace and resilience. Instead of apathy or giving up, it's about recognizing our own power and independence. We regain the power to leave toxic relationships with grace and honor when we accept others as they are and focus on our own growth and well-being. Remember Marcus Aurelius's wisdom. You can't change other people the next time you find yourself in a bad situation. You should instead work on building up your inner strength, resilience and peace of mind. By doing this, you take back your power to leave toxic relationships and make a way to more authenticity and happiness. Lesson 6. Believe what your gut tells you. In the sixth lesson, we learn about the ancient wisdom of trusting your gut, which is a central idea in Marcus Aurelius's Stoic philosophy. It's a lighthouse that tells us to listen to the whispers of our inner wisdom when it comes to leaving toxic situations. For Marcus Aurelius, intuition is like a compass that points us toward what is good and true. Most of the time, toxicity shows up as a gut feeling, a strong but subtle signal that warns us of possible harm or danger. How then do we learn to trust our gut feelings when we're in a bad situation? Marcus Aurelius gives a straightforward but profound advice. Cultivate inner silence and block out the noise of outside influences. We can find the path that fits our values and well-being by quieting our minds and tuning in to our inner guidance. Sometimes it's hard to trust our gut, especially when other people have different ideas or when we feel pressure from outside sources. However, Marcus Aurelius reminds us that our intuition is a reflection of our deepest truths and a source of wisdom that holds the key to gracefully and wisely navigating life's challenges. Remember Marcus Aurelius's timeless wisdom the next time you find yourself at a crossroads and trying to figure out how to get out of a bad situation. Trust your gut. Pay attention to the small voices inside of you that are telling you what to do and let them lead you to a path of clarity, authenticity and inner peace. The seventh lesson is that leaving doesn't mean giving up. A very important lesson is taught in Lesson 7. Walking away doesn't mean giving up. If we're talking about leaving toxic situations, it's a reminder that doing so is an act of courage and self-preservation, not defeat. There are a lot of different kinds of toxic situations, like a relationship that drains you, a toxic workplace, or a pattern of hurting yourself. In each case, we have to leave when staying will only make our pain and stagnation worse. Marcus Aurelius shows us that leaving toxic people takes strength and wisdom. It means being able to tell when something isn't good for us and having the courage to change course. So how do we find the right balance between letting go and staying? As a rule of thumb, Marcus Aurelius says, to listen to the whispers of your inner wisdom. Believe in the voice inside you that tells you when it's time to let go and move on to more peace and happiness. Quitting toxic people isn't a sign of defeat. It's a statement of our worth and dignity. This is a statement that we deserve better, that we deserve relationships and places that help us grow and be healthy. Lesson 8 let what you do stand for itself. It's often our actions that speak louder than our words when we're in toxic situations. Think of a bad relationship or a bad place of work where rumors are common and promises are often broken. It's simple to get caught up in the bad in these situations. However, Marcus Aurelius reminds us that what we do has the power to bring about change. We don't have to give in to the toxic emotions we can set a good example. In a toxic workplace, for example, we don't have to be negative or spread rumors. Instead, we can choose to be professional, helpful, and focused on our work. Others will want to follow your lead because it sets a good example. 
People can also learn from our actions what kind of behavior is expected of them and what kind is not. When our boundaries are constantly being crossed in a bad relationship, we can choose to stand our ground in a respectful but firm way. The other person will know that we respect ourselves and expect to be treated with respect. Actually, letting our actions speak means that they are in line with our beliefs and values. This is true whether we're speaking out against injustice, making the world a better place, or just being kind and respectful to others. Lesson 9. Look inside yourself to find approval. Lesson 9 teaches the timeless wisdom that when it comes to leaving toxic situations, you should look for approval within yourself instead of relying on other people. This idea fits very well with Marcus Aurelius's Stoic philosophy, which stressed the importance of building up inner strength and independence. Imagine being in a bad relationship where people are always questioning your worth and value. You might look to your partner for approval, hoping that their approval will make you feel whole again. Marcus Aurelius, on the other hand, would remind us that real validation comes from within, from realizing our own worth and loving the things and strengths that make us special. To put it more practically, seeking validation within means building up your self-esteem and awareness. It means trusting our own judgment and intuition and recognizing our worth regardless of what other people say or do. For instance, if you're in a toxic workplace where your contributions aren't valued, you might find validation within by reminding yourself of your skills, accomplishments and inherent worth instead of looking for validation from your co-workers or bosses. Marcus Aurelius teaches us that validation from other people is temporary and unreliable because it depends on the mood of the people around you and how things are going in your life. On the other hand, validation from within is steady and unwavering, coming from a strong sense of self-acceptance and respect. Knowing that our worth is not based on other people's approval gives us the confidence and honor to leave toxic situations. If you ever feel like you need to get approval from other people, Stop and think about Marcus Aurelius's timeless wisdom. Look within for the approval and validation you're looking for and watch as you reclaim your power and independence as you gracefully and confidently leave those who are toxic in your life. Lesson 10. Enjoy the fresh air. Lesson 10 tells us to enjoy the fresh air that comes from leaving toxic situations behind and starting over. The Stoic philosophy of Marcus Aurelius, which stressed the importance of renewal and growth, fits this idea very well. Imagine being trapped in a bad situation, like a relationship that makes you feel trapped, a bad place to work, or a habit of talking badly to yourself. Being stuck in a stuffy room with no airflow is like that. The air gets stale and suffocates your spirit and vitality. Marcus Aurelius would have us remember that just as getting some fresh air is good for your body, getting away from things that are bad for you is good for your mind. Taking a deep breath of fresh air literally means letting go of harmful situations and opening yourself up to new chances for growth and renewal. Getting rid of unhealthy relationships that aren't good for you, looking for a better place to work that helps you grow, or questioning negative thought patterns that keep you stuck in a cycle of self-doubt are all examples of this. Marcus Aurelius teaches us that it takes courage and resilience to enjoy fresh air. It's about recognizing how uncomfortable change can be while also believing in the power of fresh starts to make things better. It's like going outside in the fresh air after being inside all day. There may be fear and uncertainty but there's also a sense of freedom and possibility. So, the next time you feel like you can't breathe in a toxic environment, remember what Marcus Aurelius taught you about wisdom. Accept that things are going to change and start over. This will help you feel better and move you toward a better, more fulfilling future. Eleventh lesson, keep your safe place safe. In the context of leaving toxic situations, 
Lesson 11 stresses how important it is to protect our inner sanctuaries when we're going through the chaos of toxicity. The Stoic philosophy of Marcus Aurelius fits well with this idea because it stresses how important it is to find inner peace and tranquility. Think about situations that are bad for you, like a relationship that hurts you emotionally, a hostile workplace, or even a bad opinion of yourself. In each case, our inner sanctuary is open to negativity and conflict, which puts our mental and emotional health at risk. Marcus Aurelius would remind us that we should protect our inner sanctuaries from the harsh effects of toxicity in the same way that we protect our outer sanctuaries from threats from the outside. Practically speaking, protecting your sanctuary means knowing when to leave a bad situation for the sake of your health and happiness. In a relationship where someone is emotionally abusive, for example, leaving might mean setting clear boundaries and getting help from friends or professionals you trust. When there is a toxic work environment, it could mean looking for other jobs or pushing for change within the company. Being more self-aware and kind to yourself may help calm your inner turmoil when you're dealing with negative self-talk or bad habits. Marcus Aurelius teaches us that in the midst of life's chaos, our inner sanctuary is a place of peace and clarity. It protects us from the onslaught of bad things and conflict, like a fortress of resilience. We regain our power and control by making protecting this sanctuary a top priority. We come out of it stronger and more resilient than ever before. So remember to protect your sanctuary the next time you're faced with something toxic. Develop an inner sanctuary of peace and quiet and let it protect you from the storms of bad moods and conflict. By doing this, you honor Marcus Aurelius's wisdom and take back your sense of inner peace and independence. Lesson 12. Take charge of your inner world. In Lesson 12, we learn how very important it is to control our inner worlds even when we are in bad situations. A lot of what this idea says fits with Marcus Aurelius's Stoic philosophy, which stresses how important inner strength and resilience are for getting through life's problems. Developing a sense of self-awareness and emotional resilience that allows you to weather the waves of negativity and conflict is part of mastering your inner world in the context of leaving toxic situations. Knowing that we can manage our own thoughts, feelings and actions is important, even if we can't always change the things going on around us. Think about a relationship that is toxic because of constant manipulation and gaslighting, or a workplace that is toxic because stress and hostility are normal. In every case, mastering your inner world means staying true to your own values and principles and not letting outside influences change you. In the middle of chaos, it's important to keep your inner peace and clarity and not let the bad things going on around you destroy your sense of self-worth or integrity. Some practices that can help you master your inner world are being mindful, reflecting on yourself and controlling your emotions. It entails developing resilience and gratitude, as well as finding healthy ways to deal with stress and anger. Marcus Aurelius teaches us that real mastery is found in controlling our own minds and emotions, not in controlling external circumstances. As the captain of a ship, you have to steer it through rough seas. We may not be able to change the weather, but we can use skill and wisdom to navigate our ship to safer waters. Take control of your inner world the next time you're around toxic people. You can leave toxic situations with grace and dignity if you cultivate an inner peace and resilience. You can regain your power and agency and become stronger and more resilient than ever before by utilizing the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius and mastering your inner world. In the end, leaving toxic situations reveals a deep truth. Holding on is not what gives us the most power. Having the courage to let go is. We've learned from Marcus Aurelius's timeless wisdom and the life-changing lessons we've studied that leaving is not a sign of weakness, but of self-worth and respect. 
In the midst of life's chaos, it's about taking back control, protecting our inner safe spaces, and taking control of our inner worlds. Let us remember that we hold the key to our own freedom as we deal with the difficulties of unhealthy relationships, environments, and inner struggles. We make a way to authenticity and empowerment by letting in fresh air, setting limits, and trusting our gut. In this way, we honor Marcus Aurelius's teachings and get back our inner peace and freedom. Let those who are starting to walk away know that they are not alone. Let's all believe in the power of letting go to change things and move into a future full of growth and possibilities. You happen to have found a golden gem, not the newest joke or movie that went popular either. If you've ever found yourself looking through social media and groaning about how hard life is, asking why you can't just let go of things, or just wanting to care less about everything, then you've come to the right place. The Stoics were smart people who lived their lives by rules that, believe it or not, can teach us how to learn how to not care too much. It's funny that old wisdom can still help us live our busy, coffee fueled lives. Enjoy the rest of your time as you learn 10 easy but deeply changing Stoic principles. These principles are so new that they might be the answer to the chaos of modern life. Principle 1. Take charge of what's inside you and let go of what's outside you. Picture this. It's Tuesday morning and it's raining. You just made the best cup of tea ever. Just as you're about to take a sip, your cat knocks over the old one. You may have been angry and thought that hair or even the whole world was out to get you. We suffer more in imagination than in reality, said the famous Seneca. Things really do happen. Tea gets on the floor. Cats get into trouble. What do we have power over? How we felt? We don't have to let our thoughts make the next day look bad. We can choose to laugh it off and make another cup of coffee. Things will keep going wrong in the world but we have control over how we respond. Take a big breath the next time your Wi-Fi goes down during that important Zoom call or your pizza comes out cold. What bothers us is not the cold pizza, but how we think about it. Principle number two, enjoy the present. Marcus Aurelius once said, do not worry about the future. You will get there if you take care of the present. That was back in the day. We get alerts and binge watch every second, and our minds were racing faster than our internet could handle. But what do we miss most of the time, right now? Remember times when you walked in the park, but your mind was on the things you had to do tomorrow, or those family dinners where you thought about things you wished you had done differently. The Stoics teach us that right now is a gift. So why waste time thinking about the past or the future? It's not enough to just pay attention to be present. It's about living your life to the fullest. Taking time to enjoy your food, chat with friends, and enjoy the wind on your face. Let go of your regrets from yesterday and your worries for tomorrow. The little things that make up our happiness are what make up the big picture of life. Principle 3. Let change happen as it will. Have you ever thought about how easily the seasons change? The cold from winter melts so that spring can grow. But when things change in our lives, like a new job, a breakup, or a move, we fight it. Epictetus said it best. What matters is not what happens to you, but how you react to it. Life is like the River Thames. It's always changing. It's tiring to fight against the flow. When you accept it, you find freedom. Evolution is a part of life. You are a work in progress, just like Rome wasn't built in a day. Every change, every turn, gives your subject a new brushstroke. Remember that the next time you find yourself on an unexpected side trip, it's all part of the plan. Fourth principle, help other people. The world we live in is full of chances and ways to make a change. To quote Seneca, we do not exist independently, but we are all connected through a spiritual partnership. 
Stoicism isn't just about getting to know yourself and growing as a person. It's also about making the world a better place for everyone. Helping other people not only makes their lives better and more meaningful, but it also makes our own lives better and more meaningful. Helping our neighbors when they're having a hard time, working to help the community grow, or just being there for our friends when they're having a hard time, every kind act we do has an effect that spreads out into the world. On a nice day, let's say you see your friend Mary having a hard time with her planting. You choose not to just look away and decide to help. You and Mary work in the garden together, talk and enjoy the morning. This shows that you care about Mary and want to help her, and it also speeds up the work she needs to do. More importantly, it makes the neighborhood more peaceful and shows that even small acts can make a difference in someone's life. Don't forget that this trip isn't just about improving yourself. It's also about helping other people. As we improve ourselves, we can make the world a better place. We can also do this by showing love and kindness to those around us. Principle 5. Grow your inner wealth in this time. Instagram pages and other social media sites are very popular, and people often use them to show off their money and other material things in a flashy way. In this situation, it's simple for us to find happiness in flashy things and the newest gatherings of a lot of people. But the ideas of old thinkers like Seneca give us a different view. Seneca said that high-tech gadgets and high-end dress names are not always signs of wealth. Real wealth is in our hearts, in being able to live life to the fullest. It's what makes the soul happy, the wealth of unforgettable events and the treasure of treasured memories. Imagine a friend who has traveled to many countries and shared interesting stories about each one. They may not have a lot of things or a lot of money, but they have a great trove of wonderful memories and experiences that they will never forget. You may have a lot of expensive things and modern comforts, but when you hear your friend talk about their journey and how much they enjoy life, you understand that real wealth is not what you own, but being able to enjoy every moment. Stoic thinkers tell us that while it is good to enjoy the comforts of life, we shouldn't let them dictate our happiness. We shouldn't be so focused on getting more money. Instead, we should be building stories, connections, and moral ideals. In the end, what matters most in life are the stories and results we make, not how much money we have or how many things we own. Principle 6. Understand that death is a normal part of life. No matter if you lose a loved one, a favorite jacket, or a memory that you hold dear, the pain is unbearable. We might feel like life has lost its point at that point. Nevertheless, as Marcus Aurelius said, loss is not a bad thing. In fact, it is an important part of how we change and grow. This means that we can't avoid change because it is a part of life. Life is like a huge environment where each season has its own rules. In the same way that trees lose their leaves to grow new ones, our lives have chapters that end and start over. There is a chance to learn and grow at every finish, and there is a chance to learn and grow at every beginning. Stoic philosophy pushes us to embrace the transience of life rather than holding on to what has passed. Life is always changing, and being able to welcome and accept these changes helps us live fully. We should love deeply not only the people around us, but also ourselves. And when it's time to let go, we should do it with force, like a bright new day. Life goes on, and we should keep going with courage and an open mind about what will happen. So, let's say you love sports and have a beloved bike that you've used for years. You've taken many trips on this bike, and it's become an important part of your daily life. But one day, someone steals the bike from you. At first, losing this bike hurts a lot and makes you feel bad. You might feel like a part of you is gone, but after some time, you start to see this loss in a different way. You take the chance to buy a new bike, maybe one that is more modern and better fits your needs right now. 
You also learn how to judge the real worth of things and find happiness in life, not in them. Not having the bike is a bad change, but it also means a fresh start. Instead of holding on to the past, it's important that you learn from this and let it change your life and outlook in a better way. 7. Understand and accept your fate. I'm not saying you should accept everything without question, but as Epictetus said, don't expect that things happen the way you want them to. Instead, wish that they happen the way they do. The many complicated parts of life are a result of our actions and the way the world was made. No matter how hard we try, sometimes the results don't go our way. Stoic philosophy tells us to accept what has happened instead of being upset that things didn't go as planned. In the end, the most interesting stories often start with changes that no one expected. According to Stoic philosophy, we don't have to get rid of all our wants or our desire to make our lives better. This idea says we should accept what we can't change and focus on what we can. This helps us feel less stressed and anxious when we don't know what will happen or don't want it to. Take advantage of changes that come up out of the blue. Take the chances to learn and grow from them. Problems that come up out of the blue can sometimes open up new doors and teach us important lessons that we missed in the original plan. Surprising things happen in life all the time and you have to deal with them. Life can be more important and worth living if we learn how to deal with and learn from these changes. Imagine that you had carefully planned and packed for a weekend camping trip. You brought clothes, food and ideas for things to do. When you got to your goal though, the weather changed and it started to rain. Your plans to go camping were dropped in large part. You chose to change rather than become disheartened and disappointed. You and your friends chose to do things inside instead of outside. Meeting people from the area was interesting and you did and saw things you didn't expect. The group as a whole was happy. Even though the weather changed without warning, your trip turned out to be a great experience in the end. Principle 8. Stop relying on outside approval. As time goes on, our lives become more and more connected and interactive online with every like, share and message on social media sites. We often look for approval from other people and judge our worth by what other people say about us. But have we really thought about how dangerous it is to focus too much on these small icons on the screen? Let's look at Epictetus's writings, a Stoic philosopher renowned for his wisdom, to understand this point of view. He wrote, Man is not so much worried by real problems as by his imagined anxieties about real problems. These words show how important it is to focus on what is real and important in life instead of getting caught up in useless worries and hopes. Stoic philosophy helps us find meaning and approval inside ourselves. We shouldn't base our sense of self-worth on how popular we are online. Instead, we should look at our values, acts and character. To do this, you need to know yourself, be able to make choices on your own and be able to honestly evaluate yourself. When your post doesn't get the attention you wanted or when someone sends you a private message with mean comments, remember that the public doesn't decide how valuable you are. You are the one who judges and makes peace with yourself. Don't let the symbols on the screen affect how you feel about yourself or how much you value yourself. You can instead get your confidence and happiness from the principles and ideals you have built into your life. In the mind of a scientist, you have worked for months or even years on a very important study project. When the project is done, you decide to share the results on social media to get comments from people in science and the public. You hope that many people will like it and share it. But when you post the piece, you're let down when you see that not as many people like and share it as you thought they would. There are also comments from people who don't like your study and say mean things about it. With stoic thought, you can use stoic philosophy to look at yourself clearly in this situation. It's possible to learn what you're really worth 
and not let online symbols make you doubt yourself. You don't have to let bad comments stop you from working hard and adding to science. Principle 9. Try to grow even when things are hard. Has something ever been hard for you? It could be the stress of having to deal with a tough boss, a never-ending stack of bills, or a train that is always late. It's simple to whine and wish that life were a little nicer. However, Seneca said, difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. Think of difficulties as mental workouts. When things go wrong, instead of asking, why me? Ask yourself, what is this teaching me? Every problem has a lesson and a chance to grow. It depends on how you look at it. Stoic thinkers might say, bring it on if they were alive today. Challenges are not just trials. They give us chances to learn more about ourselves and grow. By seeing problems as normal parts of life, they help us learn to be patient, persistent and flexible. We can grow and learn to be stronger. In fact, these problems make life more interesting and varied. Take the role of a new worker at a big tech company who is working on a significant project. Your boss is strict and wants great work from you. During the process, you face many problems, such as not having enough time, having a lot of work to do, and feeling pressure from your co-workers. You choose to see these difficulties as chances to improve your time management, planning, and ability to work under pressure rather than just whining and feeling defeated. You learn how to work faster, how to work together with others, and most importantly, how to deal with stress better. This not only helps you finish the job, but it also makes you better to deal with problems at work and in your personal life. In this case, problems can be turned into chances to learn and grow. Don't forget that everyone has problems in their lives. It's how we deal with them and what we learn from them that matters. To be successful, you can't avoid problems. You have to be able to handle them with strength and wisdom. Number 10. Think, review and realign. The world never stops moving and shaking, never giving us a chance to catch our breath. Still, we should remember what Marcus Aurelius said. Our happiness doesn't rest on what happens outside of us, but on how we think about things. Even if it's only for a moment, it's important that we can make our minds a peaceful place. The soul can be seen in the many reflections we do. They show how we feel, what we think, and what we know. Because of this, give yourself some time every day to look into your soul and learn more about yourself. In turn, this helps us see our own trends, change the way we're going, and see the world in a new way. It's like getting monthly updates for your life system. You should think about what you did not only to judge yourself and your mistakes, but also to learn from them. Small wins are important to celebrate because they move you forward on your journey. Imagine that things are not going well at work and you are under a lot of stress. You can respond by blaming and hating everyone around you, or you can choose to solve the problem in a productive way. You can create peace in your soul by keeping a positive outlook and focused on finding answers. You can also make your workplace better and get better results at the same time. What this shows is that using wisdom and positive thinking can make a difference in your daily life. We don't have to become cold or emotionless to follow these ideals. They just teach us how to be patient, live in the moment, and have a worthwhile and important life by getting to know ourselves and having resilience in the face of life. We can make peace and happiness come true. We often find ourselves in the middle of emotional storms and problems we didn't see coming. People around us can hurt us deeply sometimes. It's possible that the best way to stay strong during those events is not to try to avoid them, but to learn how to face and get through them without getting hurt. What do we have power over? These are our own thoughts, feelings, wants and hates. What about things you can't change? These are money, land, fame, and power. 
Since these things don't have anything to do with what we do or decide, they shouldn't hurt us or make us angry. Stoicism becomes a way of life, a gentle way to protect our hearts from pointless hurt, from this point of view, rather than just a philosophy of thought. Now we're going to learn the 10 essential Stoic principles, which are important lessons that will help you build a strong soul where mean words and bad actions can't hurt you. When we follow these 10 rules every day, we not only find true happiness, but we also become unbeatable in any situation. Rule number one, don't even think about living in shame. Have I done anything just because I wanted other people to like it is something that we've all probably thought to ourselves at some point. Some examples are when you post pictures or information on social networks that don't really show who you are just to get likes and comments from other people. Or maybe it's when you give up on your own goals and ideals just to meet the needs and demands of the people around you. During those times, we often get caught up in a pointless race to be the first to accept someone. However, does it really make us happy and joyful? Have we ever thought about whether there is a way to live our lives without having to worry about what other people think? When you ask those kinds of questions, you should think about this because everyone has been pushed to do something that made them feel bad, even though they didn't mean to hurt anyone. Stoicism shows us a cool way to get away from this pressure. We have no control over what other people think, but we do have full control over how we judge ourselves. One option is to let the bad weather make you angry or sad, like when you go outside and see it's raining. Another is to accept that you can't change it and choose not to let it change your mood. What you feel doesn't change the world around you. The only thing that can change is how you respond to it. Stoicism teaches us to judge ourselves based on our morals and the things we do, rather than letting shame affect us. This helps us stay confident in ourselves and come up with our own unique ideals and goals. Imagine a life where you are free, sure of yourself, and based on your own ideas and beliefs, and you don't have to worry about being embarrassed. Stoicism gives you that gift, which helps you live a more worthwhile life. The second principle is that someone can turn an insult into an offense by showing self-control. When we talk about self-control, we're talking about human traits, like being able to deal with problems and keep your feelings in check. What distinguishes weakness from strength in trying times is this. Principle number two teaches us something important. Your strength is not just how you handle insults, but also how you use them to push yourself forward. To have self-control, we need to be able to recognize and handle our feelings at all times. Stoic philosophy says that this not only makes our souls better, but it also makes us realize how important it is to be patient and understanding with other people. Let's say you work in an office and have a friend who constantly attacks or insults you. You choose to follow the stoic philosophy of self-control instead of getting angry or feeling sorry for yourself. At first, you ask yourself, what do insults from other people change about my life? You know that these comments don't change anything about who you are. They're just someone's way of showing that they're unhappy. Instead of having comments hurt you, you use them to push yourself to be better. You plan to work on building your confidence and morals more. You chose to be patient and positive in the face of these problems instead of insulting them. Using comments as a weapon of hurt becomes a tool of mental strength when you do this. You not only keep your soul safe, but you also get stronger this way. Don't let anyone hurt your feelings and remember that it takes work and patience to turn an insult into a chance to grow. However, if you do this, you will feel better and no one will be able to hurt your soul as easily. This is because self-control and the stoic philosophy can protect you from harm. Leave a comment if you agree with what was said. Third rule, don't lose sight of your goals. The goal isn't just a job, it's a mission, a light in the dark world of life. 
When the world is always changing and there are threats and problems from all sides, the idea of staying true to your goals helps us keep going even when things get hard and not let anything change our course. Our goals are what keep us going. It's not just a hazy goal, it's a strong source of courage and a light that shows us the way. It's like being on a boat in the seas of life and your goal is like the only star in the sky at night. As far as you know, that star is the only source of light in space and it will be your only way to get there. If you fail to reach this goal, you will be lost in the ocean with no idea where to go. Afterward, the darkness of doubt and insecurity will surround you, leaving you feeling alone and hopeless in a world full of many possibilities and risks. There are hard times in the world, but problems are not enemies. They teach us how to turn them into chances. Epictetus, a wise and stoic philosopher, once said, It's not what happens to you that matters, but how you react to it. This quote gives us a deep understanding of how life works. The story shows that our fate is not determined by everything that happens to us, but by how we deal with those things. The Stoic view sees difficulties as chances to develop and show the strength of our spirit. Rainy summer days can't make it hard for you to see your goal on your journey. Instead, they are skilled workers and artists who make life beautiful. They never get in the way of your goals. Instead, they make them stand out more, like a finished painting on the gallery wall of your life. They help you understand what goals are and how important it is to be patient and determined. The fourth principle is about insults and other crimes. People will insult and hurt us no matter what. Anything someone says or does to hurt us can become a weapon if we let it. When someone is rude to you, remember that what they say and do says more about them than it does about you. They are letting you know about their own worries, fears, or problems. If you don't let them in, your heart and soul are like a fortress that can't be broken into. This is a strong word from the Stoic philosophy, which says to keep your mood up and not let outside things affect you. When someone insults you, don't respond quickly or quietly. We should instead take them in and deal with them quietly, using logic to think about and decide what to do. We can look at the problem more objectively when we ask ourselves, is this really going to hurt me or is that how other people see me? Imagine that you are at a family meeting when a friend starts to harshly criticize your work and the way you raise your kids, as well as your personal choices and way of life. Don't let that comment hurt you and make you angry. Instead, look at it rationally and don't let it change how you feel. Be thankful for the good things in your life and thank the person for caring enough to share their view, even if you don't agree with it or accept it. This helps you stay cool and respect yourself and it also gives you the chance to show how mature and self-controlled you are by changing a bad scenario into a learning experience. Don't forget that you control your feelings. Consider it a chance to put your inner strength and capacity for self-control to the test when someone attempts to insult you. It helps you practice self-control, which is an important skill in the Stoic philosophy. Principle number five, the strength of having a strong mind. Each of us is a traveler on the bus of life where problems and obstacles are always around the corner. Being criticized, being turned down, and having difficulties test not only our endurance, but also the strength of even the strongest souls. Stoic philosophy is like a lighthouse that shows you how to get through storms without getting lost. God has given you a lot of power. This is not just an idea. It's also a key principle that helps us face and get through all problems with inner strength. Stoics say that mental strength is not about getting rid of feelings or dodging problems. Instead, they say that it is about understanding, accepting, and turning bad events into lessons and motivation to grow as a person. As our mental strength grows, we stop seeing criticism or loss as a sign of weakness and instead see them as chances to get stronger. To find strength, remember that Marcus Aurelius, 
a great Stoic philosopher emperor said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. These wise words remind us that spiritual strength is not something that comes from outside sources, but something that we must choose every day. Don't let stress, loss or sadness get you down. Instead, choose to accept it with an open mind. The world around us changes all the time, but we can choose to stay strong and believe in our own ideals. It is very important to train yourself every day by thinking about yourself, examining yourself and practice changing the way you think in order to build a strong spiritual house. The journey requires patience, unwavering determination and a strong desire to get better. Not only do we train ourselves with each step, but we also remind ourselves of our worth and place in the world. We learn how to stay cool in a storm and find peace of mind by following this rule. When we apply principle number five to our lives, it makes us want to not only keep ourselves safe, but also become the best versions of ourselves. The real power of having a strong mind is being able to deal with any problem while staying true to yourself and your beliefs. Are you looking for peace of mind and more mental strength? Look forward to the next five rules, which will go over more ways that Stoic philosophy can change your life right now. Which of the five rules I just gave you will you follow to keep your soul safe and healthy? Please tell us what you think in the area below. Stoic ideas can help us build a strong group built on these ideals and principles. Sixth principle. Decide what to do by using your best judgment. Marcus Aurelius talked a lot about the power of the mind and how important it is to control your thoughts and keep bad ideas from taking over your soul. In terms of the sixth principle, what he shows is how to use reason and self-awareness to make your own decisions. We are told that our strength to face life storms doesn't come from outside sources, but from within, from the choices we make and how we respond to each situation. When you use your own judgment, you have to look at every scenario very carefully and also see it through the lens of your core values and life principles. Based on wisdom, kindness and fairness, every choice we make not only gives our lives value, but it also shows us the right way to live. Stoicism, on the other hand, stresses realism as well. Even though we can't change everything, we can choose how to respond to the things going on around us. The real test of strength is not being able to change things, but being able to change yourself to fit and get through them. Life can feel like a fight at times, with problems and pressure all around you. When we keep this sixth principle in mind though, we have an inner guideline that not only helps us get through hard times, but also turns them into opportunities to grow as people. Being able to make your own decisions is both a source of strength and a source of light that shines on everyone's life path. It helps us keep going in the right way with faith and trust that no one can shake. The seventh rule is that no one can hurt you. Imagine walking through the park on a calm afternoon, taking in the peaceful mood and the sound of birds singing. Suddenly, someone from behind comes up behind you and says something mean about how you look. You feel a sudden wave of feelings, from being confused, to amazed, to angry. But keep this in mind, no one can hurt you. Your heart and strength are under your control. In this case, you have the right to decide how to react when that stranger says something mean about you. You can let those words drive a wedge between your self-esteem and your happiness, or you can just ignore them. Here's how you can handle this scenario based on the Stoic philosophy. To begin, stop and ask yourself, why do I choose to dress this way? Is it because I feel good about myself? If the answer is yes, then you have strong evidence to support your point of view. Second, don't get mad or sad. Instead, keep your cool. Remind yourself that getting angry doesn't solve the problem it only kills inner peace. Third, try to see the problem from the point of view of the stranger. 
They might have been having a bad day and picked you to hurt to feel better. You don't agree, but you don't have to fight. Fourth, know that the clothes you wear show who you are and no one can take that away from you. You don't have to defend or explain the choices you make. Fifth, don't let this hurt you. Instead, see it as a chance to wake up and learn. You might face a similar situation again in the future and know how to handle it with more confidence and calm. You will not only keep inner peace by following these steps, but you will also gain mental strength over time. Stoic philosophy says that it is our biggest strength to be able to control how we respond to the world around us. Eighth rule. If someone says bad things about you, don't worry about it. It was Marcus Aurelius who said, if it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. This quote shows that bad words from other people only hurt us when we let them. The most important thing to remember is that we are in charge of our feelings and deeds. An attitude of calmness is not a lack of care, but rather a sign of inner strength and the ability to handle one's feelings. Stoics teach us that one of the most important lessons is to not let anyone or anything upset our inner peace. Being truly free means not being limited by what other people think. What other people think about you doesn't decide how valuable you are. Every day, you choose to grow and support your real nature, your morals, and your deepest beliefs. Whenever someone says something bad about you, ask yourself, is there anything I can learn from this and use to make myself better? If there is, use it as inspiration to get better. If not, let it go like clouds in the sky without leaving any mark on your mind. To put this idea into practice, begin by being kind and patient with yourself. When someone criticizes you, take a moment to think about it clearly and don't respond right away. Is there any truth in those words? If there is, this could be a chance to study and improve yourself. In that case, just let go and keep going on your way. Principle number eight. Don't worry if someone says bad things about you is a strong warning to keep your inner peace and stay true to your values and principles no matter what life throws at you. Being calm and in control of ourselves gives us the real strength to live a good life, regardless of what other people say. Leave a message that says, I control my own emotions and thoughts, or like and share this video if you agree with the above point of view. That way, no one can hurt you. Rule number nine, taking control of the fortress that is your mind. Think of your mind as a strong fortress where you are the only God. Imagine that this fortress is made of strong steel and stone blocks. It is so strong that it can't be broken. You are in charge of every part of your life from the safety of your mind. Storms from society often hit this fortress, which stands for pressure, praise, and criticism from other people. You are in charge of your mind, though. You never let anything get in the way of your castle or make it shake. Your strengths are your kindness and unwavering courage. When you do this, you not only make your mind completely still, but you also turn it into a great source of energy. You learn not to let changes affect how you feel and your mood. Think about being in a public talk about your personal views in front of a big group of people who all have different thoughts and opinions about you. There may be people who disagree with you and people who agree with you. All of this makes my mind feel like it's under a lot of stress and pressure. But because you're in charge of your thoughts, you don't let this warning change your mind. By staying calm and sure of yourself, you turn this conversation into a chance to share your point of view and learn from others. The resolve of stoicism is shown when you let your spirit guide you. You don't let this thinking test shake your fortress. This is proof of how powerful it is to keep your mind in check and not let any weakness enter your domain. Principle number 10. Know yourself very well. Being able to clearly see your thoughts, feelings, attitudes, 
and behaviors at a certain time is what it means to understand yourself. Objective observation, analysis, and self-evaluation are needed to get oriented, change behavior, and act in a good way. But why is it so important to know yourself? Why should we put in the time and effort to figure out what drives us? Tips on how to get to know yourself better and achieve your goals. Just like an artist makes a piece by cutting away unnecessary parts to show a permanent picture in a block of stone, we need to let go of lies and other things that are getting in the way of seeing who we really are. We find out what we're really like every time we look at ourselves. We have the courage to face our wants, fears and flaws. Through questioning, we can find out what causes pain and how to make peace. Knowing yourself well is like having a strong shield around you when fate comes after you. The protection keeps us safe from the outside world's power. When you're clear, you can be flexible. Being self-aware helps us know what we can and cannot change. So we make good use of our energy by accepting the changes we can make and facing the things we can't change with courage. Like a great artist, the Stoic thinkers got rid of confusion and fear, leaving behind a beautiful figure of self-control. This deep understanding shows us where morals comes from, how to be calm, and the eternal truth that nothing outside of ourselves can really hurt us. Adopt the last principle of Stoicism with the fervor of an artist, because when we know ourselves, we make the way to endless quiet and no storm can shake our unwavering stability. As we wrap up our journey through the principles of Stoicism, remember that this is just the beginning of a more controlled and purposeful way of living. The ideas and strategies we've explored are tools for you to carry into your everyday life, helping you navigate its ups and downs with a steadier hand. Stoicism isn't just about reading and understanding, it's about doing. It's in the daily application of these principles, choosing action over worry, focusing on what's in your control and letting go of what isn't, that you'll truly start to see a change in your life. This philosophy offers a path to not just cope with life's challenges, but to thrive amidst them, finding joy and satisfaction in the process. Keep revisiting the Stoic practices we've discussed. The more you use them, the more natural they'll become, gradually shaping your responses to life and its myriad situations. Remember, Stoicism is not a quick fix, but a lifelong journey toward personal growth and resilience. Thank you for taking these first steps into the world of Stoicism with us. May the insights you've gained serve as a foundation for a life lived with more control, peace and fulfillment. Continue to explore, practice and reflect on these teachings as you move forward. Here's to your journey of taking control of your life, equipped with the timeless wisdom of Stoicism.